Good morning. Now the time to start the workshop. It's uh, 10 o'clock right now. <laughs> now, okay. 10 15. Okay, but now I would like to start the workshop. So at the beginning of today's workshop, but this time, this workshop was co-hosted by Trilanco University and ECDC, Thai Creative Design Center, and also by KO University from Japan. So, at the start of this workshop, I would like to cordially ask you, the Professor Song Chai, to make some comments to all the participants. Professor Song Chai, thank you very much for coming. Thank you very much, Mr. Variti. I can understand the, what is the content about. <laughs> Thank you very much. So now, I would like to start the workshop. So the first part will be the introduction. So maybe around 30 minutes. I would like to introduce very general idea of our workshop and also our self-introduction, our staff, our university, and our KOH program, and our philosophy of this program. So maybe it will take around 30 minutes. So first of all, just one year ago, I came to here in Bangkok for the first time. January in 2015. How many of you have joined last year? Oh, one, two? Oh, <laughs> no audience, no participants. Okay, it's okay. But just one year ago, we came to here and had a very short workshop. This is the start of our activities. And in this picture, here is Mr. Variti, who has also the hosted last years. And also, Dr. Prima also joined the first workshop last year. And the second visit was also in March of last year. And among participants, she, we usually call her powder, sitting over there, yeah. <laughs> she was selected as a uh, the representative of Thailand, and we invited her to come to Keio University, and he, she stayed three months in Japan last autumn. And now you are going to have the workshop, and just one candidate, one person, will be selected this year's activity. Okay, you know the situation very well. And also, 
We met many faculty members or staff in Chulalongkorn University, both including the Professor Song Chai, and also the visited TCDC. This is the, our activity in here in Bangkok. Okay? And today is a second year activity. So the purpose of our visit is like this. So we would like to host an innovative thinking workshop today and tomorrow. And we would like to demonstrate the participants who might be interested in joining the KOH program. So we have already received more than 20 CVs, 20 applicants. But maybe you will change your mind to apply just after today's workshop. So we will receive your additional CV tonight. I will explain later. And the second point is we would like to recruit some candidates out of these participants. Maybe the number is around three to six or something like that. And we will make an interview tomorrow. And then just one student from Thailand to join this year's 2016 4 KOH program. We will invite you. Okay? So the today's schedule is like this. Start at 10.15 and morning session will end at 12.15 and after the lunch break the starting from 1.15 to 5.15. This is a today's schedule and tomorrow we will start, we would like to start at 10. Okay? <laughs> so I believe that at the 10 o'clock everybody is sitting waiting for the workshop. Okay? And the morning session will end at 12.30. And starting from 1.30, we have already selected some. Uh, now we will select some candidates, and we will make uh, interviews, individual interviews, starting from 1.30. This is the two days schedule. So now, we would like to introduce our key. KOHT. So KOHT, please come to here. First of all, I would like to introduce myself. I'm Yoki, Associate Professor of KO University System Design Management. And I'm teaching systems engineering and also the design project, right? This kind of project-based learning. So now I'm a university faculty member, but I used to be a satellite system engineer. So I worked for the Japanese manufacturing company Mitsubishi and designed many satellites for more than 25 years. The sum of the satellite is still in orbit working in space. But now I'm teaching in university. And the next person is Good morning. So my name is Seiko Shirasaka. Uh, oh, Seiko is very easy to remember. Same as a watchmaker, right? Uh, it's, not, it's not my company. <laughs> okay, so I, I'm, my background is very similar to the Professor Yoki. I'm working for the Mitsubishi as a space systems engineer for 15 years. And uh, from 2004, I started to teach, temporarily teach a systems engineer at Keio University. And uh, I changed my job in two, 2010, completely changed from Mitsubishi to the Keio University. So we are doing, teaching this kind of uh, approach we call innovative thinking, not only to the, our students, but also to the many companies in Japan, like automotive companies, electric companies, pharmacies, so several kinds of the uh, company industries. So if you feel interesting to our, our approach, please apply to the uh, our four uh, KOH program. When you come to our university and take three month course, maybe you are completely understand what we are doing in Japan. 
Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Yoshikazu Tomita, but it is cold. It's hard to say. Let's call me Yoshi. This is okay. So I have uh, two different career uh, in my career. So one is uh, in academic. Uh, I am one of faculty member of KOSDM and I'm also H program. So I'm teaching uh, in the systems engineering for design social system. Yeah. And uh, also I teach the entrepreneurship and uh, uh, entrepreneurship design is to uh, to build your own company. So how do you uh, build your company? So in other hand, I'm learning. Uh, actual business. Yes, uh, in I was in my twenties. I started my first company, and then I had started uh, several company. Uh, so some company is now growing, but some company had uh, so sad story. <laughs> so so I can I can tell tell you about uh, how to success company or how to fail the company. So, so and I'm very glad to discuss about the entrepreneurship and this uh, innovation in this time. Thank you very much. Okay, good morning, everyone. Good morning. My, good morning. My name is Kyoko Watanabe. I'm one of the faculty members from KOSDM. And my background is um, information architecture, doing uh, for many years uh, translating from Japanese into English. It's something to do with the, the changing the structure, uh, structuring the meaning and idea of the, what it is said in Japanese and put it in the English structure. So in that way, um, I'm doing it in, in an architecting thing. So. Um, and in terms of entrepreneurship, I have been, uh, for many years, I did uh, that work as a freelance, and then I also started my own business in 2000, and started doing uh, translation work, and then website design. And also, I'm now uh, one of the members of the uh, Tomita Sensei, that has the, just introduced, he started his own business, and I, I, I joined last year, so we are doing the, that business. And uh, in the SDM, I'm um, teaching. I'm in charge of the doing teaching uh, design project, which is a very similar program for its uh, six month program, and it's a compulsory compulsory program. And doing this kind of work uh, for six months, given by the company actual problems of the companies, and then solve them in six six months. And today uh, I'm going to do most of the workshop, and so I will speak a lot in the, during the workshop. I just stop here. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Good morning. My name is Yasuyuki Kobori, uh, STM master student and electrical engineer. My job is uh, construction and maintenance of wind turbine. My special skill is uh, climb, the, climb the vertical ladder very fast because, <laughs> <laughs> because wind turbine uh, 60 meter or 80 meter vertical rudder, <laughs> very hard. Uh, please enjoy this workshop. Thank you. Hi, my name is Mubi Takatani. I'm the master uh, course student of the system design and management uh, program in Keio University. And um, I actually had a great time with, the, with Powder, who is the um, uh, the participant of the um, EDGE program last year, and I am really expecting to have a great time with you, with you, or one of you, um, from this uh, from today's and uh, tomorrow's session. So um, please enjoy the um, this workshop, and 
we are here, we are all the teaching assistants are here to support you, so please um, ask for any help or support you need. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, my name is Mikiko Nakata. I am the alumni of the 2015 KOH program. So I participated last year and I'm so glad to be here today. Um, I'm currently working at Mitsukoshi Isetan. I think Bangkok has a Bangkok Isetan. Um, I'm working at the uh, Tokyo office and I'm also a student of the SDM. So, uh, I'm looking forward to working with you guys. Thank you. Oh, by the way, I'm sorry. Uh, we went to the, this last one last night. Some, some. Yes, you guys are professional, but it was really taste good and uh, I took pictures with them. So, thank you. You can call me Powder. Actually, my real nickname in Thai is Bang Food. So and it's very difficult for a foreigner to call me. Then I was changed it to Powder. <laughs> a very easy one. And uh, okay, my my signature when I present my nickname to all my friends is Powder. <laughs> so everyone remember me. And I was elected last year. I had a very great experience there. And uh, uh, for my background, actually, I um, graduated from industrial design uh, in Jalalabad University. And right now, I work at um, printing house, my family business. So I hope you enjoy this workshop. And we'll see you in Kale. Okay, thank you. I'm I'm one of the alumni students for KOH program 2015. I'm a, a representative from University of Malaya, and I also joined the Edge 2015 um, intensive course together with my good friend, which I made during the three months, and also Nakata Mihiko. And uh, yeah, it's a good experience, so we're here to help you as well. So if you have any questions, please feel free to ask us for any help at all, any assistance at all. And Oh yeah, I'm from the healthcare background. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay, we have four faculty members and five alumni and teaching assistants. So many, so many from three different countries. Okay, to support you during these two days. Okay, so you can ask anything for these faculty members and supporting staff. Okay? Thank you very much. And after my presentation, the father will make uh, some presentation regarding her experience in Japan. She have stayed uh, she has stayed three months last year and so many white experiences so she will provide you the what was in japan so starting from now a little bit short introduction regarding our university ko university how many of you have already known before this workshop about ko university thank you thank you very few this is on person this is why i am here to introduce our university. So, you should remember the name of KO University today. Well, our university was founded more than 150 years ago. Your university is almost 100. Next year is the 100th anniversary. Today? This year? Oh, this year. Oh, this year is the 100th. So, your university is the oldest university, and our university is almost one of the oldest universities in Japan. And the uh, number of students is also similar. You have many, about 40,000 students, and we have 33,000 
So very similar in uh, your university and our university. And the first line is uh, our founder's name, Mr. Yukichi Fukuzawa. How many of you know about Yukichi Fukuzawa? No. Of course not. <laughs> but in Japan, every Japanese knows his name and also his face. Every, no exception. Every Japanese knows our industry's founder's name and his face. Can you guess a reason? Reason why every Japanese knows. No? Yeah. He is on the note of this. Okay? So, this is why our university founder is so famous in Japan. One of the most famous university founder in Japan. This one. He is our founder. Okay? And also, I would like to introduce our graduate school, SDM. SDM is the abbreviation of System Design and Management. So our SDM is Japanese one and only graduate program for methodologies of system design and management. And there are several similar universities or graduate schools in the world, like MIT in the United States and National University of Singapore in Singapore. Very few. But in Japan, this is the only, our graduate school is the only program for system design and management. And the, we have the systems engineering, design thinking, and project management. These three are pillars of our graduate school. And currently, the innovation design for entrepreneurship is a very hot topic to our graduates. Cool. And starting from now, we would like to introduce about H program. H is the abbreviation of enhancing development of global entrepreneur program. This is funded by Japanese government, not just by Keiwa University. This is a government funded, very wide scope of project. And the one point, most important one, is the making the entrepreneurship enhancement education will be, should be sustainable. And also the establish the innovation ecosystem. This is a very important point. Not just one-time workshop, not just one-year education, but also the ecosystem should be established in order to be sustainable of these kinds of activities. This is the most important point. And the government project, government program is uh, run by 13 universities in Japan, and Keio University, our Keio University is one of the key members of this program. So, the starting from now, I would like to introduce Keio H program. This is our special program. So, one point is by learning innovative thinking approaches. This is a key word of our Keio H program, and also today's workshop. Innovative thinking is one of the most important keywords. And this by learning innovative thinking approaches, you have some specific expertise in some certain domains. You have very deep knowledge in architecture, computer science, business, or other kinds of expertise. And you should learn this kind of innovative thinking so that you enhance the global entrepreneurship mindset or how to do this kind of activity. 
by learning the two sets. Okay? So today and tomorrow, very short course, but our focus is you have some expertise and you will learn some new ideas, new mindset, new tool set, so that you will become, the, you have the global entrepreneurs. This is a primary objective of today's workshop. And our course is consists from two parts, intensive workshop and project work. The intensive workshop is an intensive six-day curriculum. And this is a structured combination of design thinking, system thinking, and business synthesis thinking, with learning both mindset and toolset. So this is six day means in this fall we will uh, start. But today, the subset of six day uh, intensive course. So the subset will be provided today and tomorrow. And also, we will conduct the project work. This is a project-based learning. The team will be four to five, very similar today. And we'll push you a new value proposition and its implementation. So the second keyword <coughs> of today's workshop is this one, new value proposition. Okay, the innovative thinking approach and new value proposition. These two words are very important words. So please remember these two words. And what is KOH of this year? The start, starting from September 17th until October 3rd, October 2nd. These are the intensive six-day workshops. And starting from now, uh, starting from 9th of October to 4th of December, we will make a project-based learning. This is our tentative schedule of KOH 2016. So once you have select, you are selected as a participant of KOH program, you will stay Japan starting from middle of September until beginning of December. So now I would like to introduce the long-term perspective of our KOH program. Currently, we have three years budget of KOH program, starting from 2014. Unfortunately, this year is the last year of government budget. Now we are trying to get additional budget from the government right now, but currently, this program will end at Japanese fiscal year 2016. So it means the next March is the end of our budget. First year, only from Japan, from Japan, the participant is only from Japan. But second year, the alumni will participate in second year. This is the last year. And also the powder is from overseas participant and alumni of 2015. And this year, the new participant will participate at the last year's activities and also you will participate this year's activity. Okay? So the first year, second year, third year is closely related and gradually establishing the ecosystem. And not just participate but recruiting some other else or uh, join the next year's workshop as a mentor or uh, as a teaching assistant or uh, sometimes instructor or angels. So this is a very general image of ecosystem of our KOH program. So we have already more than 100 active friends among these two years activities and maybe 
this year, the more than 30 or 50 participants will join to 100 active friends. So many participants or company or alumni or faculty, or of course including you, will generate this kind of KOH alumni. So you should become one of the members of our KOH alumni. Okay? So now, the word innovation is very familiar to you. Every day you see the word innovation. So what is innovation? There are so many kinds of innovation definition. But we KOH program use this. This is uh, our definition. And not by made by ourselves, but we usually use this is a definition. So one is the process of turning opportunity into new ideas. And the second part is putting these into widely used practice. So not just new ideas, not just new technologies, not just new materials, but also these new things will be used, what will be accepted by the society or by the people. Okay? So this is a very important combination of the new thing and widely used practice. This must be the true definition of innovation. So it is very difficult to make innovation. Okay? So it's rather easy to make new technologies, new services, or new materials. But the, this part, second part, is very difficult to control by yourself. But still, the definition of these two portions turning opportunities into new ideas and putting these into wide use, widely used practice. This combination must be essential for the innovation. Okay, please remember this point. Now, we usually call, okay, but this time, the title of the workshop is Innovative Thinking, not the Innovation Thinking, okay? Innovation, and innovative. This is a noun and this is adjective. How is different? What is the difference? What is the difference between two words? So now we would like to introduce the examples of innovation and innovative. So please feel the difference between innovation and innovative. So innovation is, so you have already remembered, but new things and widely used practice. Okay, this is this combination will be the innovation. So now I would like to introduce the innovation example. So please watch the movie now. This is my twin brother. Ten years ago, he was diagnosed with leukemia, but thankfully, his life was saved by a complete stranger who had registered to be a marrow donor. He was lucky, though. You see, more than 650,000 people are diagnosed with leukemia and lymphoma every year. And for the most severe cases, like my brother's, a marrow transplant is their last hope. But only about half find a match. Unfortunately, the marrow donor registry is one of the most underrepresented donor programs in the world. And it's no wonder, really. Most people think that registering as a marrow donor is painful and complicated. But really, all it takes is a couple drops of blood. The only pain is actually finding a way to register. Now, you have to either take time out of your busy day to go to a special doctor, or order a registration kit online, pay $16 for it, and while you're at it, pay for the shipping. We've made it so difficult to register. It's amazing that a few good people out there care enough to jump through all these hoops just to save a random person's life. But the fact is, most don't. Imagine, though, how many lives could be saved if registering as a marrow donor wasn't so hard. What if we could turn a normal, everyday act 
and you refuse to save a life. Introducing Help. I want to save a life. A package of over-the-counter bandages that also doubles as a simple marrow donor registry kit. So the next time you cut yourself shaving or shuffling papers or making dinner, and you reach for a box of bandages, you'll have a chance to save someone's life. You just put a couple of drops of blood in the swabs, toss it in the prepaid envelope, drop it in the mail, and that's it. You're a potential lifesaver. This simple idea brought together a pretty unlikely pair. Help Remedies, a pharmaceutical company, and DKMS, the world's largest marrow donor registry. And then something pretty amazing happened. The TED conference chose it as one of their favorite ideas of the year, and even helped us launch it at this year's global conference. And since then, the whole world's helped us spread the word and share our story. And in just a few short months, sales of health bandages are already up more than 1900%. But amongst all these sales figures and media impressions and YouTube hits, there's really only one statistic that matters. Thanks to this little pack of bandages, mail registrations have nearly tripled. Who would have thought a few paper cuts could make a world of difference and actually save lives? Okay, how about that? We think this is a very typical example of innovation. The very small new idea will generate a very wide range of social impact and widely accepted as a result of uh, this kind of combination of the bandage package and Maradona registration kit. Okay? This must be the very important examples of innovation. Not very cutting edge high technology, not the new materials, or a very new service. But very small idea will generate a very significant effect. Okay? This must be the very important example of innovation. So the next one, we would like to introduce innovative examples. This is a so to please feel the difference between the previous examples and these examples. Okay, how about that? How did you feel the difference between the first example and second example? The first example, the result was significant. The sales were dramatically increased and the mere donor registration has already tripled. And this time, how was the result? The very small and uh, garbage amount will be increased several uh, portion. But it is very good example to move people without telling the same thing again and again and again. But people 
are willing to do something with some new ideas. Okay? So we don't say this is widely accepted in the society of people, but small idea will change the people's behavior or people's way of doing something. So we would like to pursue these kinds of activity today. Okay? Not innovation but innovative thinking, okay? So please feel the difference between innovation and innovative. So this is why we named today's workshop as an innovative thinking workshop. So through our workshop today and tomorrow, please think about this point. What is innovation? What is innovative? And what should we do next, okay? So, the innovative is a KOH flavor we usually call. And thinking outside the box. Box is, you can't see the box, but please imagine the box in your mind. You have in, the, you, in your box. And in your box, or in your organization box, or in your technology domain box, or in your country's box. But if once you imagine or you realize your box, you can go outside the box. This is an innovative thinking approach. And also a new solution with new value. So the value is a very important point. So our ultimate aim is not innovative technology, not just technology, not just marketing. But the final goal should be the value creation. The value should be created. This is a very important one. So again, thinking outside the box means please realize your box. Then you can go outside the box. Okay, this is a very two steps approach. And then the new, work, new value proposition will be generated. So the KOH program scope is like this. And maybe you might be familiar to this way of thinking, but understand why, define what, and IEA and synthesize how. This three part is very important. So you should imagine, the, or you should uh, divide into three part of the activity. Why part, what part, and how part. But not this sequence. Why, then, what, then, how. You don't have to stick to the sequence. So many activities is go and back and uh, iterate some direction. So you don't have to stick to the sequence of why, what, and how. And KOH program design is structured by, like, by in this way. And you have already have domain knowledge for core competence for your each, your individual competence. And among KOH program, you will learn about system thinking, design thinking, and also business synthesis. Unfortunately, Today and tomorrow, we don't touch this business synthesis, but system thinking, design thinking, and interdisciplinary approach, then you will make new value creation for innovation. This is the structure of our KOH program. So that's all for my presentation. So enjoy today and tomorrow's workshop. Thank you very much. So powder, please come And starting from now, the powder's experience in Japan will be presented. So she will touch about uh, what is the key takeaway from KOH and why do you think it is important to you and also the message to you. Okay, please.
Okay. Yes, India. <laughs> I would just say it will be last. Okay. <laughs> I understand how you feel because last year I was here and sitting like this and then I'm thinking of like, oh, what is this? And then it's kind of a bit sleepy a little bit. <laughs> but when you do the workshop, then you will understand what is he trying to tell you. Okay, so uh, about my experience in Japan, I will say it briefly, a short one to encourage you to apply <laughs> apply your application more. And okay, what we do in a KOH um, in Japan, we do the intensive course. Intensive one for seven days, like he already told you, and then we do the workshop. Actually it's only five days, but but we do a lot more than that. We do like group discussion and we do um, research, so you don't have that much free time. <laughs> it seems to be free, but it's not that free. <laughs> and what we do, like, what did KOH teach me? It teach about the innovative thinkings here, about the collaborations, design thinking, um, system thinking, and financial and, and um, synthesis. And also the new uh, value proposition that you're going to learn today, uh, new business um, and interdisciplinary approach. Uh, to make it easy, it's like you're doing startup business. So they will teach you how to do a good uh, startup business. from Japan. And three, you will get inspired by your classmate and also their professional um, from many, many Korea because in the class, you will meet many nationalities. Like last year, it was, it's about, I think it's more than 10 nationalities in the class. And then we have a discussion, when we discussion like in the table like this. And then we do some a little fight. And, <laughs> and also sharing, actually sharing the idea. So this is, I think it's the most uh, important part uh, of the workshop. And also the experience of high technology that you have in the lab. And learn Japanese life. And also the happiness that you are gaining from this course. Okay, what did I do in the KO? So there is three things you will do in here. Okay, the group work, individual work, and then the field trip. So all your schedule in three months will be full of this. A few days free time. <laughs> Not the whole week free time. <laughs> Don't expect that you're going, you are going to Hiroshima for three days and then come back. No, no, we don't have that much time. Okay, I wish I could. Okay, and before we, I go to uh, my experience, I would like to uh, brief about the Keio University because I think most of Thai people don't know what is Keio. And actually Keio is the oldest university in Japan and also one of the top priority, um, private university in Japan. Actually, they claim as number one. <laughs> one or two because Waseda and Keio are in the same rank. And also followed by Fuku Sawa. You <laughs> Okay, in the bank note. Okay. It's from Edo, actually Edo. It's very old. 
and it has um, 11 campus but we are we going to start in the main campus not the oldest but the big one the biggest one and actually it's very well known it's like Jilong gone it's like when you say that you're starting in KO and everyone will say like oh KO <laughs> Yeah, even you're going to the fresh market and then they ask you like, where are you from? I'm from Kale. Oh, Kale. <laughs> like, it will be like that. So, but, but in Thai, I know that in Thailand, like Kale. Kale? Kale. Sorry, sorry to say that. Kale, like, oh, what is it? Where is this? Where is this university in the world? But if you are in Japan, you will be somebody. Somebody. Okay. So, Kale, this is Hiyoshi campus or oh, this will be my experience <laughs> Hiroshi campus uh, we will see this tree and somebody would think like oh Hiroshi campus you never heard it before you only go to here Shibuya, Shinjuku, um, Tokyo, Waseda, uh, Akihabara something like this I know that you're familiar for these but actually it's not very far it's just only 20 minutes or 30 minutes from yeah, station. So you can, after the class, if you want to go in town, you can just take a train to there, so not very far. And this is our building, the SDM building. Very nice and very modern. This is the entrance. And also the station, the Hiyoshi station, when you come up of the station, you just walk like one minute to the building, so it's very close. So this is the building, and this is the station. You just go up here and walk into this building. And your bedroom is here, it's right here. And the classroom is right on the second floor. <laughs> so you <laughs> you wake up, <laughs> take shower, <laughs> five minutes go down here. So you don't have to go any anywhere. <laughs> And wake up late. Okay. And also on, on this side is a Boku, Boku department store. So it's very convenient. And also um, behind the Boku, it will be a lot of um, food store. It it's um, it's like um Ramsi. Yeah, it's like campus like that. And then they have a restaurant for the students. And cost of living is quite cheap comparing to living in Tokyo and this is our building inside um, it's very modern and very um, the architect is very good and this is our, our accommodation one single bed but it's very big it's very big and uh, they have the refrigerator and also the boiler and the bathroom is big you can do the bath here, like <laughs> onsen, onsen, <laughs> onsen. <laughs> your personal onsen, okay. And this is the station, and actually the view from the window here is the Mount Fuji. You can see the Mount Fuji over here, like the sky is clear. Yeah, and this is the lab that we will have. We can experience all the um, high tech technology. We, they have like three um, 3D printing, a 3D printer, and um, they have like a, um, I don't know what is it, uh, like a screen, the fabric screener, and also this is like a, um, for shop, for wood, for crafting, and many, many, many things. Here, see, a lot of equipment and experience. It's great, like, uh, I don't know, I really love this lab because there are a lot of equipment that you can experience on and try on your um, design and on your idea and you can make it uh, possible and tangible here. Okay, and start with the first day that I um, arrived at uh, airport. So this is the TA will pick you up, so you don't worry. Somebody will pick you up here, and then you will have a dinner, a very good <laughs> dinner. And then come to the three things that I told, um, mentioned earlier, that we will have a group work. 
after we have the intensive um, lecture and then on the group work, um, professor will select the group for you to make it diversity. And in my team, I have one Japanese, one Thai, and one Brazil, Brazilian. So this is a very good combination. And then we do a lot of things. <laughs> we do a lot of um, ideas from the post-it note that you will do it today. I will just make it brief, make it short. And then we have the individual work that you can um, explore your project. Like if you want to do a business, some business, for my case, as I work in a printing uh, factory, so I want to study about my um, pro uh, products from paper. So I'm trying to use all the equipment in the lab and make uh, some products from it. And at the end, we present the work to the um, professor, and they will be a very good like advisor for us. So everyone has to do this. And we also have a field trip. Some field trip that you will experience the real life of Japan. <laughs> Let's say that Ukushiri, I, I know that nobody's here knows <laughs> where is Ukushiri. But Ukushiri is a very small, tiny island in Hokkaido area and it was um, hit by a tsunami. So everything in the island was like the desert. <laughs> it's like desert before. And then we, um, the Keio has a project to develop the city. So we go there and learn about the real things on island, the real um, life of the local, like, soccer people. What are they, uh, what did they do in that area? And then um, we try to, un like, for me, I think when you go travel to Japan, and then you just learn how the tourists, about the tourists thing. But in this island, you will learn um, another side of, of Japan and it's such a very good experience. And also we go to Kamakura, which is very close to our place. And we go to the Sumi, Sumida Aquarium, and we can talk to the designer who designed this aquarium. We had a very good experience sharing the idea with, with her. And so we go to JAXA, with a very special uh, connection of all the professor that we can see actually the room that they operate the satellites but we cannot take photos so and the most important part that i got from koh is from the start that we have a very good relationship together i got new friends from many countries, especially Malaysia, Indonesia, and India. And <laughs> professor uh, taught me how to cook. <laughs> and we go sightseeing. We do a lot of things. We go clubbing, and we experience the real Japanese um, kimono. Mm. And we went to the Hokkaido University as well. And also the Halloween. I think you might not have experience of going Halloween in Japan. It's very extremely fun. Uh, and we got a good uh, friendship and everything. So they are my extended family right now. Mm -hmm. And I would like to say that the adventure of life is to learn. So let's go to Keio and experience like you never had before. And if you're not applying your resume yet, 
or just applied it now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, if you have any questions, just ask me. Thank you so much. Diversity is high. 
I here and that diversity is low. No. Yes. Diversity is high. So um, as you can see, this is the only place where the breakthrough ideas are generated. That means high diversity. So you have to understand that if the diversity is very high, the average of the idea, level of the idea is you know, going down. So you have to accept these junk ideas, the insignificant junk ideas. But try to think that this is the only place where you can have this ideas. So we have to go for this, right? So given that, today, what about your table? You have enough diversity? Yes? No? <laughs> then you sit with someone who you don't know. So it, diversity means not only the demographic diversity, but also the disciplinary diversity. So I now I would like you to um, kind of shuffle. If you think it's not you know diverse enough, please change your seats. And make uh, have five people in one group, okay? Because from now on, we're gonna do a group work for two days, and you know, no change in members. So, could you do it? Do it now? We have one more table. Here. Okay, they have one more table there. So five people in one group, and make sure that you have uh, enough diversity. <laughs> okay? Okay. Shuffle. <laughs> I'm going to 
普通はこれは使わないけど、すごいかなり古いな。
Okay, this is important part. So using 20 sticks of spaghetti, one yard tape, one yard string, one marshmallow, and everything sits on your table. And what you do is this. A tower must stand alone. You can use tape to stand the tower. You cannot cut marshmallow. And you cannot eat marshmallow. <laughs> you can break spaghetti if you want, but if if it's un unexpectedly broken, then you know we can exchange the spaghetti. So please raise your hand in that case. Okay, and how to win? <laughs> Don't cheat like this. You can't win like this. So build the tallest standing structure. The winning team is the one that has the tallest structure measured from the tabletop surface to the top of the marshmallow. You have to make the structure, but we measure from the tabletop to the marshmallow. Okay? That means the structure cannot be suspended from a higher structure like a chair or a ceiling. So don't do this. And somebody would think that, you know, um, hanging some you know, string from the ceiling and put the marshmallow, but it's not, I, you, we, we can't uh, measure that. Okay, so I give you 18 minutes, 18 minutes. So now you got what you're gonna do, okay? So if you have a question, please raise your hand and ask. Okay. In 18 minutes, you guys have to get your hands off. All right. Okay, let's start. So all the things you can use for these activities are this. You can't use other any materials like post-it notes or anything else. These are the only things you can use for this activity. Thank you. 
Okay, you guys, five minutes left. Five minutes. And just for your information, uh, we are doing this activity at high school in Japan, girls' high school. And the record high was 70, inch, 70 centimeters. Okay? They're just high school students. And you are university students and master doctor students and faculty members. So you must be better.
even the CTOs of the Fortune 50, and there's something about this exercise that reveals very deep lessons about the nature of collaboration, and I'd like to share some of them with you. So, normally most people begin by orienting themselves 
to the task. They talk about it, they figure out what it's going to look like, they jockey for power, then they spend some time planning, organizing, they sketching, they lay out spaghetti. Uh, they spend the majority of their time assembling the sticks into ever-growing structures, and then finally, just as they're running out of time, someone takes up the marshmallow, and then they gingerly put it on top, and they stand back, and ta-da! They admire their work. But what really happens most of the time is that the ta-da turns into an uh-oh, because the way the marshmallow caught the entire structure to buckle and to collapse. So there are a number of people who have a lot more uh-oh moments than others. And among the worst are recent graduates of business school. <laughs> <laughs> they lie, they cheat, they uh, get distracted, they, and they produce really late structures. And of course, there's teams that have a lot more ta-da structures, and among the best are recent graduates of kindergarten. <laughs> it's pretty amazing, as Peter tells us. Uh, not only do they produce the tallest structures, but the most interesting structures of them all. So the question you want to ask is, how come? Why? What is it about them? And Peter likes to say that none of, this, none of the kids spend any time trying to be CEO of Spaghetti Inc., right? They don't time, spend time jockeying for power. But there's another reason as well. And the reason is that business students are trained to find the single right plan. Right? And then they execute on it. And then what happens is when they put the marshmallow on the top, they run out of time, and what happens? It's a crisis. Sound familiar, right? Okay, what kindergartners do differently is that they start with the marshmallow and they build prototypes, successive prototypes, always keeping the marshmallow on top. So they have multiple times uh, to, to fix and to build prototypes along the way. So designers recognize this type of collaboration as the essence of the iterative process. And with each version, kids get instant feedback about what works and what doesn't work. So the capacity to play in prototype is, is really essential. But let's look at how different teams perform. So the average for most people is around 20 inches. Business school students, about uh, half of that. Lawyers, a little better, but not much better than that. Kindergartens, better than most adults. Who does the very best? Architects and engineers, thankfully. <laughs> Thirty-nine inches, the tallest structure uh, I've seen. And why is it? Because they understand triangles and self-reinforcing geometrical patterns are the key to building self-reinforced uh, uh, stable structures. So uh, CEOs, a little bit better than average, but here's where it gets interesting. If you put an executive admin on the team, they get significantly better. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you look around, you go, oh, that team's going to win. You can just tell beforehand. And why is that? Because they have special skills of facilitation. They manage the process. They understand the process. And any team who manages and uh, pays a close attention to, to work uh, will significantly in improve the team's performance. Specialized skills and facilitation skills, uh, the combination leads to, to strong success. If you have 10 teams that typically perform, you'll get maybe six or so that have standing structures. And I, I, I tried something interesting. I thought, let's up the ante once. So I offered a $10,000 prize of software to the winning team. So what do you think happened to these design students? What was the result? <laughs> Not one team had a standing structure. Not one had, uh, uh, if anyone had built, say, a, a one-inch structure, they would have taken home the, the prize. So isn't it interesting that high stakes uh, have a strong impact? We did the exercise again with the same students. What do you think happened then? So now they understand the value of prototyping. So the same team went from being the very worst to being among the very best. They produced the tallest structures in the least amount of time. So there's deep lessons for us about the nature of incentives and success. So you might ask, why would anyone actually spend time writing a marshmallow uh, challenge? And the reason is I've helped create digital tools and processes to help uh, teams build cars and video games and visual effects. Um, and what the marshmallow challenge does is it helps them identify the hidden assumptions. Because frankly, every project has its own marshmallow, doesn't it? 
The, the challenge provides a shared experience, a common language, a uh, common stance to build the right prototype. And so this is the value of the experience of this so simple exercise. And those of you who are interested may want to go to marshmallowchallenge.com. It's a blog that you can look at how to build uh, the marshmallows. There are step-by-step -step instructions on this. Uh, there are crazy examples from around the world of how people tweak and adjust the system. There's world records that are on this as well. And the fundamental lesson, I believe, is that design truly is a contact sport. Uh, it demands that we bring all of our senses to the task and that we apply the very best of our thinking, our feeling, and our doing to the challenge that we have uh, at hand. And sometimes a little prototype of this experience is all that it takes to turn us from uh, an uh-oh -oh moment to a ta-da moment, and that can make a big difference. Thank you very much. Okay, how was it? So, there are some key takeaways from these activities, as you understand now from the, looking at the TED Talk. You, I, I guess most of the groups, teams here, spend too much on thinking. Right. And small chances to try. So that means the takeaway and lesson from this activity is to try and fail first. Like you, you know, you could, you have just uh, heard that the small children was the best students, right, for this activity. That means they have tried so many times without too much thinking. So, too much time in thinking, small chances try. That's something familiar in your work, I guess. So please try and fail fast. That's one of the lessons. And number two, remember the real goal of your activity. Real goal. What was the real goal for this activity? Was to put the marshmallow as high as possible. When I explained about the, what, how, what you do with this activity, I repeatedly say that we gotta measure the height of marshmallow, not the height of tower, okay? So, to put the marshmallow as high as possible was the purpose, was the goal of this activity. And measuring the toll, the measuring was how part? By building a high tower. So in many of the activities you are actually doing, you, try, you tend to focus on how part, not the what part. So please focus on what part. Please know the goal, clear goal, and knowing that this is the how part, and this is the what part. Okay, and also one of the uh, key takeaways is the collaboration with team members. Collaborate and make, make the best use of diversity, like I said before. That would achieve the goal. Okay, so these are the uh, lessons from this activity. And it's time for lunch, okay? <laughs> So we're gonna continue on uh, afternoon. We're gonna have one hour lunch time, around lunch break. So please come back at, um, it's 12, um, okay. Please come back at 1.20, okay, 1.20. Okay, พาเราไปทานพุทธของเรื่องในมหาลัยก็ได้แต่วันนี้วันนี้ที่เป็นคนละบ้านเป็นอาจารย์ว่านะฮะซึ่งก็ประมาณ 30-40 บาทอาจารย์ที่ในมหาลัยก็ได้นะครับสมควรที่จะรีบกลับมาให้ให้ตรงเวลาด้วยนะครับนะครับนะครับ Uh, you talk about Fukushima, um, Fukushima, but you haven't told us who is he. Who is he? He's the founder of Keio University. <laughs> no, he's uh, he is. How do I explain about him? He's a founder. Founder. He he's not a politician. He's not a king. 
Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, why is he on the back note? Because he, he contributed a lot in the history of Japan in the early period of Meiji. And he, King, King is, uh, in our country, you know, the emperor is a symbol of the country. Yes. Uh, no, no, no banknotes with King or Emperor or Empress. Like he need to have a higher bridge back Like he need to have higher accommodation to set up the the university. How can he be a The house is funded, but that's the question. Yes, yes. It's a private, uh, you know, coming school at first in the beginning, and how he founded was um, basically it's funded by the graduate school, graduated students. Yeah, it started very small scale, very very small. He, he, yeah, he, he used to be a teacher. He was teaching at a very small scale, and it's like a cramming school. And, and many of the students, his students, became a famous politician in Japan. Is that true? <laughs> Am I the right thing? Yes? Yeah. Yes, the, the, so the university system, he did not meant to uh, build such big university, but the system, university system came after because uh, the graduated students wanted to have this as a, you know, as a system of a university for this country. So that was the beginning of the history of you know, university in Japan. Okay. All right. So, everybody, everybody's here, right? Okay, now um, you're all set as a team after team building and you know, marshmallow challenge. Now I'm going to talk uh, about the whole picture of this you know, edge workshop for the demonstration. First, the content, context. This is the context of today and tomorrow's workshop. The topic is healthcare. You are a team thinking about launching a startup business in healthcare domain. Your scope is global and have not decided what to focus on. You are in the phase of developing your concept with a consensus of live logging. So you are a team of uh, developers who are thinking about healthcare business. Okay, that's the context. And here is the process framework of each program. First, program definition, and then ideation, architecting, and business synthesis. And these are the processes. And also research and analysis and some other processes. And it looks like a linear process, but actually it is not. You can take a look at these you know, arrows upside and down. So that means you make iterations. Sometimes you go, start from here, and then ideation, and then go back to this problem definition after some, you know, doing some research. And sometimes you can start with other, you know, process and going back forward and backwards again and again. We call it iteration. So iteration takes place anywhere. And how this iteration started is with insights, getting insights. So iteration driven by insights. So, um, who can explain about insights? Insights is really in you know, a conceptual 
uh, thing to explain, but uh, this is uh, kind of a keyword for our workshop, okay, insights. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about finding insights. So insight from the dictionary is something like an instance of apprehending the true nature of a thing, especially through intuitive understanding. So it's not a be something you can see, but it's true nature and behind something. So intuitive understanding, this is a key word. And seeing into inner character or underlying truth, penetrating mental vision. So these things all talk about something you, you see behind what you can see. So try to see behind. So that's the insight. And insight is a driving force. You can say this is a driving force to move your project forward. Insight shows the new direction and dimension to create innovative solutions. So this is why we focus on insights, finding insights. And it can be found from your discussions, outputs of your work, and outcomes, even outcomes. And you use uh, multiple insights, not only just one insight. You get a lot of insight out of your work, and so you utilize all those insights to develop your problem definition and ideation, architecture, and making it a business. And make them as your building parts. So the insights are going to be the building parts of your outcome. And most of the times, the solution is built around your favorite, strongest, unique insight. So when you have a, very, uh, a lot of interest in your, what you have found, so, and you like it, then it's going to be something to be a, a big, you know, important part of your, or of your outcome. Okay, so this is the example of insect. A very famous case. You can see this. Everybody knows this, right? USB memory flash, and. This is a story of how USB flash memory was developed. And it was one of the insights of a Japanese concept creator that brought about its concept. He is the one. His name is Hideshi Hamaguchi. Have you ever heard of him? No. He's actually a famous, very famous in, in America and in Europe. And even if he is not famous in his you know, face and name, but he, is he must be very famous because this thing was invented by his concept. And this is how he found this insight. In 1999 in the United States, he was discussing about the future of data management with his client. And at that time, the prominent data storage media was floppy disk. Floppy disk. Have, do you, who don't know floppy disk? <laughs> because young people don't know about this, right? It used to be the prominent data storage media, OK? But you know, the digital camera and you know, movie and PowerPoint data, the size of the data was becoming more and more bigger and bigger. So this could not, you know, we couldn't handle those big data just with this, you know, very small uh, media. So we were, they, they were talking about how would the, you know, data management would be in the future. And everybody thought that it's going to be okay because it's, everything is going to wireless. We will have the cloud, cloud, you know, data storage. So, well, it's just go to the internet. 
But his finding was this. What he focused on was he, here. Actually, this is, this is the uh, user experience, tangible user experience and intangible user experience. And this is the size of the data, of the state, but it's data. Small and large. So floppy disk sits here, tangible experience and small amount of data. And wireless technology here is a large storage, but intangible. And Hideshi Hamaguchi's finding was here. He focused on here. He thought that even if the, you know, the data is going to be wireless, maybe people want to have experience, tangible experience, even if everything is going to be wireless. So if the, the data is very, very important, people may want to hand it, actually physically hand it to someone, not just going up to the internet and just let them download, but people would like to, you know, physical activity. And he came up with this idea. So this is the concept developed by this guy. Yes. Left corner here, intangible and small. Anyone? <laughs> Bluetooth. 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 Before the wireless, you have to do it. Before the Bluetooth, you have in wireless, right? To detect and send a small data between device. So it is intangible and small one. Intangible and small one. You think in wireless to detect and send the small data between the mobile. And maybe cellular also can send a data as well, H, E, D, G, before. So that, that, that era, we can send only a small data. Yeah. Yeah. So we become need, a yes, yes. So that is a, because we need more, more, more bigger space for yeah. storage. Yes, that's why everything went to wireless. Okay, so what, this is the one of, uh, one, one way to explain about the insight. What does insight taste like? Then we, we say it's u unusual. It's unusual, but interesting. It's unusual, but interesting. It's something new, I've never thought about it, but it's, inter it's interesting. And also unfamiliar, but convincing. Something unfamiliar, but that's convincing, then it could be, you know, some kind of insight. Okay? And now, when should we find insights? This is the question. When? We have um, why domain, what domain, how domain. In any domains, we have a lot of activities. But when do we find insights? The answer is here. In many cases, you would you tend to find insights in how, in ideation, and synthesizing, how to solve the problem, how to implement, how to grow. But if you find insights in understanding why to do this, and why it's important, or what we should solve, and what we should achieve. In these domains, if you find good insights, then you will be able to find innovative how. Okay? So try to, try to find insights in these processes. Okay? So the insights, when you try finding insights, this is how you do it. Try to look at the whole, not just part. And sometimes change the viewpoints. Changing the viewpoints 
makes you find, it makes it a little easier to find insights. Okay? And it could be some kind of trend or some kind of new question. And for the rest of the workshop, for the rest of the session, you are going to, uh, we are going to ask you find insights so many times. And whenever you discuss with the with your team member try to find the insights, then you find something, try to write down. Not just a discussion. Please write, write down. And especially, please um, decide which color you're going to write down the insights. So that afterwards you can take a look at the, the output of the whole you know, uh, work. Then these are the insights you got. Okay? So please decide which color you're going to write down insights. Okay. So, that being said, here's what you're going to do for these two days. So, these are the tools and techniques. You can see these two by two matrix, brainstorming, CDCA, prototyping, and test. In these processes, we're going to do, we're going to use these tools and techniques. But these are just the tools. Please remember this. We are going to introduce how to use these tools, but these are just tools. That means you have to find insights. These are tools to find insights. Okay? So these tools will not generate any solution. But insights will give you some kind of solution. So try to find insights using, using these tools. And iterate. OK. So again, this is a context you're going to do today. And first process. The problem definition. Problem definition. How um, have you ever thought about problem definition? Is it familiar to you? Problem definition. Defining problem. Defining problem. This is a very very important process. It can be said that it is more difficult to find an innovative idea or solution for an ordinary problem or question. So when you define problem, many people tend to set the question or problem, very ordinary one. This is an example. How can we improve the automobile gas mileage? This is really ordinary. But if you are in the industry of automobile, then everybody have been thought about this for many, many years. So all the automobile industry people have been thought about this. So even if you are now um, tackling to you know, this problem, you cannot beat them, right? So what you have to do is to redefine the problem. Define your problem or question so it is unfamiliar but interesting and also important. So you have to find how you redefine your problem. This is an example of redefined problem. How can we improve the accumulated gas mileage of a person or his, his or her cars in a time frame of 10 years? So this is a big question, right? But maybe not so many people have been thought about this. This means that gas mileage is not about a car, just a car. It depends on the who is driving the car and how you drive the car or where you drive the car. 
So why don't you take a look at this gas mileage in terms of frame of you know time frame? Okay, so this is one of the redefined problems. So try to find innovative problem space that is fascinating and worth investing time to explore. This is also called reframing a problem. Okay? So this is one example of reframed problem and generated the product. Have you ever heard of this? This is actually the, the real product that one of the TAs has um, prepared. This is Harinax. This is called Harinax. Harinax is staple free stapler. Uh, do you have this in this country? Yes, yes. Have you ever used this? No? Yes? Some, some says yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, this is something, the stapler, but stapler uses staples. That's the ordinary, you know, thinking. But somebody in this com company, the company named Kokuyo, thought that how can we use, make, you know, staplers without using staples? This is the question. This is the redefined question. Okay? And the thing is this. The manufacturer was not stuck with their bias for conventional stapler. Well, we usually maybe staplers. I want to, you know, invent some kind of staplers without staples. Then, you know, your boss would say, "No way, staples need staples, right?" But what was good about this company was they were not stuck with a bias for conventional stapler, and were able to define an innovative problem to solve. The question seems to be crazy in the beginning. However, the manufacturer did not stop expanding the solution space. So this is a very, very important point. And this is one another example. Have you ever seen this? No? No? Can you imagine what it is? Yeah, airbag? That's an invisible helmet. Invisible helmet. So this is also invented, developed out of redefined problem. This is actually uh, one of the product who has won with that was that won the um, design award in Denmark, and this is helmet. See? This part. This part is the helmet and then when something happens, this comes out to cover your head and works as a helmet. So ordinary problem. They, these, uh, the people who developed this product wanted to uh, make people use the helmet when they drive, when, when they use the bicycles. So the ordinary problem is how can we make people wear helmets when they ride bicycles? But their re redefined problem was how can we wear helmets without making our hair messed up? Because the bicycle is not, uh, um, you, 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 can, you, uh, you are allowed to ride bicycle without helmets. But wearing helmets will make you you know, a less and less causing the, um, the accidents, right? So they found that in many cases, the, the accident by the, who, who rode the bicycle have been avoided if they were wearing the helmets. So they wanted to make them wear the helmets. But actually the inventors for this product was, were girls university students, girls. And they did not want to wear them when they, you know, are dressed up because most of the helmets were sportive, sporty ones, and they, go, they don't go, go well with the, your outfit. So they wanted to have something, you know, that can go with your you know, outfit and your lifestyle. 
So this is redefined problem, and they invented this. Okay, so um, so like this, um, when you try to redefine the problem, there are a lot of approaches. Design thinking approach, you, feel, you go field work and observe something, and you do, you, you do interview and, and empathize, prototyping testing, you find some kind of insights, and then you redefine the problem. Also, in the system thinking approach, same thing. And so find interesting insight and define problem. Yes. Uh, what is actually the difference between design thinking and system thinking? Design thinking, system thinking, difference. That's a long story. <laughs> in short, in short, in short, system thinking is something you um, try to structure the thing. You take a look, you look, and as a system, as a system, and try to you know structure the what is the element and what are the you know relationship e with each other. So th these are the systems thinking, and design thinking is something you. When you try to think something in, you know, you use your designer's viewpoint and not the, you know, actually the, not too much logical, but try to use the, you know, intuitive thing and collaboration with the, your team members and also the empathy from the users. So those things are used in the design thinking. Um, this is like the design thinking is that something if that's something you design as a product, and for system thinking, you, you, you think in the big scope and then narrow it down to the small thing? Okay, systems thinking is not just uh, to, you know, analyzing and narrowing it down to small, thing, small things, but to try to think, to try to take something as a system, as a whole, yeah. and sometimes you have to take a look at in very details, but you know, the system thinking is this. And system thinking and design thinking, you have to um, do, you have to utilize those two different thinking at the same time. That would be you know, very, very effective. So that's what all about the EDGE program, okay? Okay, what is that CBCA? Okay, CBCA is going to uh, happen to, uh, later this week, uh, I mean later today. It's a, one of the uh, tool we are going to use, okay? It's a variation for customer value chain analysis, okay? So, where were we? Okay, these are also examples of problem definition. Uh, okay, uh, as I said, um, we, we are actually working, uh, doing this kind of activity in girls' high school in Japan. And this problem definition was one of the example in that school. Okay, their first problem definition was global warming. And very direct and very straightforward, very big problem, right? So, and they uh, did some interview and field work and asking some, you know, about this matter to their friends and family. And they found that um, that they, they say that we do a lot of things to do, something to do with the global warming, but those people did not feel anything that I'm contributing this global warming. So they, their re redefined problem was this. How might we make people quickly feel that what they did contributes to stop global warming? So they changed. They reframe the problem definition. Okay? And another example is this. Like you see, uh, like you uh, saw at the, you know, the fun theory, the can that, you know, goes down very below. And the problem should be, used to be, how 
to clean litter on the ground in the park. But for them, redefined problem would be how might we make people like to throw litter in trash can? Okay? So, it's your turn to define a problem of healthcare with a concept of life logging. And reframe and redefine your problem. How might we blah blah blah? And these are the steps. These are the steps. First, you list up what are already there. What are in the box? What are in the box? First, you think about anything you can think of about healthcare, write down and make a list. And then plot them on two by two metric. We're gonna do this activity one by one, okay? So st step two is a plot them on two by two metrics. And step three, finding insights, okay? So first, list up what's in the box, what's conventional about healthcare. Any items, factors, elements you can think of about healthcare with a concept of life logging. If, you know, with the concept of life logging is difficult, then just about healthcare is going to be okay. These are the examples, sleep disorders, dietary balance, nutritional supplement, obesity, anything you can think of about the healthcare. What are the what are there on the market? And any conventional elements. So first try to think of conventional, what you know. It, now it, on this stage you don't have to, you know, jump. Try to try to um, make visible what's in your mind right now. Okay? So I give you 10 minutes to do this activity. Please try, uh, please get ready with uh, this whiteboard paper. As you have already noticed, this paper, or oh, this is upside down, upside down. Okay, that's, oh. So, um, the sh yeah, this is the surface. This is the surface of the paper with the logo. Logo here. Please don't write down the, the back side. Okay, this can work as a whiteboard. So you can use the pens ready on the table and erasers. And of course, a lot of uh, post-it notes. Please write down and make a list like in a brainstorming form. Okay? So I give you 10 minutes for this work. Yes, for this 10 minutes, just listing up, list up what's up, what's on your in your mind. And two by two activity is gonna be the next step. Okay? So just listing up. And uh, I have to tell you this, sorry I didn't, I haven't tell you this, but uh, all the materials will be given to you afterwards, okay? So you don't have to, you know, take so much memo and take photos. All the materials, slides, materials, that going to deliver okay. Thank you. 
病気とか病名とか周りで判断とかあるんで、何が起こるのか分かりません。ももなしてるのかもどうどうTo visualize quantitative and qualitative factors. The way to do this is to one step one is draw two arrows and define axis and then plot. And then find insights. This is how you do it. So um, create create two by two metrics. Plot what you have listed at the conventional items, elements, factors of health care, yeah, you have just you know list it up on the sheet. Okay, so first define the axis and try to create several sets, I mean at least two sets of axes of indexes and find insights. This is the example. This is the example. Um, this is the um, two by two matrix using what's on the market as an electric appliance for men's beauty. So they plot these things using these axes. Direct, indirect, quick effect, and delayed effect. And some insights. Here, in this quadrant, many products with handles are here in this quadrant. And this is obvious that nothing is in this quadrant. 
and very few products in this quadrant. So these are the insights. And so please try to define the axis and plot what you have just visited on the sheet. Okay? I give you 20 minutes. Okay? Everything clear? Any question? Okay? Create two by two metrics. First, draw two lines, vertical and horizontal, and then define the axis and plot what you have this Okay, 20 minutes.
are creative and innovative because you are working on innovative thinking workshop right and you want to have you want to make something think of something innovative and creative so the access should be creative and innovative of course none of you have said short term and long term have you <laughs> direct and indirect. Is it ordinary or an extraordinary? Kind of ordinary, right? But you don't want to have ordinary insights, do you? That means the axis itself should be something creative. Because you want to find some insights out of this work. So I'm gonna explain a little bit about the indexes. Okay, so could you sit down please for a minute? Okay. How you define the access really counts if you want interesting and innovative insights. So plotting on ordinary access metrics will bring you only ordinary findings. If everybody are working on the same axis, because you these outputs from the what you have listed on the paper for the you know previous work is almost the same in your you know most of the teams have the same result. And if the axes are the same, then you all have same insights, right? So here creative innovative access will bring you innovative innovative insights which means one example innovative access beautiful usually the opposite of the beautiful is ugly but why don't you put that that it's beautiful and cute it could be you know one end and the other end it's not opposite, but it could be beautiful and cute, an axis. And boy and girl, usually one side is boy, then the other side could be girl, but it could be like this. Boy and beautiful boy. This is something not so many people would think of. But it could be one set of axis. Okay? So what you do here is this. Good looking is the opposite of good looking is bad looking. But when you think of good looking, you have so many things here. And break down this good looking se segment. So why don't you break down the segment and make this kind of axis. Beautiful and cute. Okay, so these are the axes that not so many people would think of. So try to think of, come up with unique and creative and innovative axis. It could be anything, anything. So try 
every time you think of and just try. And if, if it doesn't work, then try another set. Okay? So the purpose of this is to get out of the box, getting out of the box. So structure conventional ideas and visualize the structure and get out of the box. What you have on your sheet is the conventional ideas and elements. So try to structure it in a way that nobody else are doing and find insights and get out of the box. This is the purpose of this work, okay? So I give you another 15 minutes to think of innovative acts. Try out innovative access. Identify an area you want to expand further or dig deeper. So this is something you find insights. Okay? I give you 15 minutes. Okay, if you have any questions, please raise your hand. The TA and we will help you. Okay, 15 more minutes. ดีก็คือจะต้องแก้ปัญหาที่มีอยู่แต่ความต้องการเนี่ยไม่ได้เกิดการปัญหาที่ยังทำอยากทำโดยที่ไม่ใช่เป็นปัญหาแต่ที่
การเลือกก็เดี๋ยวเขาจะมีสแกนอยู่ตอนนี้ทุกงานที่ไปเขาบอกว่าเขาต้องมีสองคนเลยแต่เขาจะมีการที่ได้แก้
observation, other approaches, we do several approaches and all together we get together the findings and our insights out of these, you know, each activity and then we usually define the problem, redefine the problem and make it a sentence. But today because we, this is a short, you know, period of time demonstration, so um, I have to ask you to do this out of this just one activity. Okay, so this is very difficult, but this is a practice. Please take it as a practice and try to do this activity. Okay, so out of what you have found out of this two by two matrix activity, please redefine your problem and put it in a sentence in the form of this. How might we blah blah blah? And same as the two by two matrix indexes, ordinary problem or interesting problem. This really counts. From the ordinary problem, your output would be ordinary solution. But from interesting problem, then you can get interesting solution. The possibility is much higher here. Okay? So I give you another 20 minutes. So maybe you have not finished finding insights and you have not decided where to dig deeper. You can continue and then in 20 minutes, please write down one sentence for the redefined problem. And that's gonna be your theme for the rest of the work, okay? Okay, so 20 minutes. <laughs>
ソリューションソリューションをに向けてのインサイトというかソリューションアイデアを膨らませてるところがほとんど。本当はなんか新しい問題の形を見つかれば、たぶんこの中で、手前に困らないんじゃないかっていう感じに、はいはい、でもよくあるよね、なんか、上に行った場合はそれだけど、問題に見かかってないっていう問題が。
we make steps and process, certain process to come up with solution. But please wait, okay? So before the solution, we talk about value. Okay? So value creation is something very, very important for our edge program. Okay? So what is value? What is value? Is it money? Is it bank account? What is value? Not only this. You saw this video for the um, I want to save a life, help, uh, you know, the bandage and the collaboration for the marrow donation. You remember the video? Yes? So this generated a lot of value. But it's not to it's not it's not much to do with the money, right? And also Wikipedia. It brings you a lot of value. Right? But it's not anything so much to do with money. You don't pay for Wikipedia, right? And also these are the cloud funding. And it's about money, but if you get some fun from these you get a lot more than you get as a, you know, money, the price of money. You get a lot more value. So value is not only the money and the bank account. And also, value is something to be perceived by customers. Even if you think and you know, make sure that you are providing value, when the customer does not think it is value, then there is no value. So it must be perceived by customers. And value is always defined by those who use it or pay for it. And again, I'm going to tell you, these, all these materials are going to be given to you afterwards. So you don't have to you know, take memo all the words, okay? And what is the benefit to a specific person or customer? This defines the perceived value. So the value is not something just you know provided, but it must be perceived by the payer or user. And value is some someone's benefit, someone's gain, could be joy, satisfaction, pain relief, help someone's excitement, someone's peace of mind, etc. So there are many, many kinds of values. So, explore values that should be delivered to users or customers. This is how you do this. Values are easily divided by Defining pain relievers and gain creators. This is one way to divide, to classify the values. Pain relievers and gain creators. Pain relievers is something to relieve the pain. So if you have some problem, this value will solve this problem. That's a pain reliever. This is example. When the theme is personal mobility, pain relievers, value as pain relievers, one example is much less strain on legs. Because one user has strain on legs, then the personal mobility will give you much less strain on legs. So this is one of the pain relieving values. And gain creating values. As game creating that value, you can say exhilarating feeling. There is no problem, any any bad problem. But once you you know write on the personal mobility, you get you know exhilarating feeling, fun feeling, right? So 
So this is not out of any province, right? So we call it game creators. So please think about what are the important values to be delivered in order to solve your redefined problems. Or once this defined problem is solved, what kind of value you can provide? Okay, and who will receive what kind of value in this kind of chart? List up important pain relievers and gain creators to be delivered and state who will receive those values. List up stakeholders in your own group's theme, program, redefine program, and try to explore the values. Pain relieving value and gain creating values. Okay, so now you have to work on this and again in 20 minutes. Okay, so and um, I want to ask you one thing. I want to ask you one thing. Um, for the discussion in the group work, please use English. Please use English. So that we can understand what you're talking about. Okay? Please use English. Okay, so clear about the work? Value proposition? Okay? So I give you 20 minutes. Try to state the stakeholders, and it's something to do with what you have decided as a redefined problem. Okay, your own problem as a healthcare. Okay. Okay. So 20 minutes. When you have problem questions, please raise your hands. Okay. Start. あ、そうそう。
มันจะได้เกี่ยวเยอะเลยเราไม่ใช่ที่ที่ที่ที่ที่ที่ที่ที่ที่ที่ที่ที่ที่ที่ที่ที่ที่ที่ที่ที่ที่ที่ที่ที่ที่ที่ที่ที่ที่ที่
description and try to think is it unique is it easy to understand and if even if a similar business model had already existed you don't have to be disappointed too much because you you can differentiate your model or you can outperform the rivals and your pain relievers, gain creators, do not need to solve all the pains and gains of customers. So you can just focus on extreme pains and essential gains. So what are the essential and the most important value for your project, for your theme? And I want you to do this, this to description. Your team, uh, you have, um, maybe you can use the A4 sheet of paper or new um, whiteboard paper, but please define, identify problem definition and then value proposition. And please consider, is it cons consistent? <laughs> the problem is this, and once this problem is solved, the certain stakeholder can, it can get this value. So try to think of this, okay? So I give you Okay, I give you um, five minutes, okay? Five minutes? No? Ten minutes? Ten minutes? Because after that, you have break. <laughs> okay. So um, yeah, I want to make it clear and describe the problem and value, and try to think if this is coherent or consistent. If it's not, it's okay. You can change. If the you know well now you may have the value proposition here maybe, and it's not consistent. When this happens, you can 
put another you know, product definition. You rethink, re redefine again. And this actually happens. This is the uh, you know, iteration. So think about the product definition and think about the value proposition. During the work, it changes. And that happens. And you have to allow this. Okay, so I give you, okay, 10 minutes, 10 minutes. One value proposition, very important for your system or for your project. And problem definition. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> And please remember the value proposition is not solution, not yet, not yet the solution, okay? This is the value proposition. And you have to think that there are many, many solutions, many kinds of solutions to provide one value. So please stop here. Please hold your mind not to jump into the solution here, okay?
私がするので
to build on the, the ideas of others. So it's not just uh, generating ideas, but also you can, you can associate with the other ideas. So you should write or draw clearly and be vocal every time you place your post-it notes so that others have more chances to build on your ideas. I think most of you, I mean, all of you have experienced brainstorming. Who have never done brainstorming? All of you, right? All of you. But um, maybe this is uh, the first time to, to know the how, what is the rule for the brainstorming. So I'm going to explain. So brainstorming as free association majors. So these are the team, the you in the group, as think as this. You are the brains. You're the brains. And you connect your brains through these activities. It's almost like you are connecting your brains with others. And associating the idea means that to build on others' ideas. 
If someone says coffee to keep you awake, then others can say green tea to keep you awake, energy drink to stay awake. So it's it's associated. It's not the very new single, you know, individual ideas, but it can be related. And try not to think so deeply to generate one single very good idea, but try to use other ideas. Try to build on others' ideas. Using, you know, looking at the others, post-it notes, and you can add your own flavor into others' ideas. Okay? So, and in order to do that, in order to, you know, connect to your brain, you have to increase the chance to build on the ideas. So, please write clearly. If you write very small letters and nobody, you know, notices it, then it does not make you, you know, brains connected. It doesn't stimulate your brain. So try to stimulate your brains with with your vision and with your hearing. So write clearly with big letters and write down simple, simply. Write simply. And sometimes you can draw too. And go for quantity. This is a very important uh, rule for this brainstorming. The quantity counts for brainstorming. I mean, the quality is supported afterwards. So first, quantity. And build on the other's ideas. Encourage wild ideas. And defer judgment. And do not block the others. That means Going for the quantity is important, so when you find something, is it really the idea for this theme, then just don't say that. Just allow them to do anything, you know. So judgment could be done afterwards, not during this activity, okay? So defer judgment and do not block the others. Don't try Try not to block others, you know, imagination and, you know, generating ideas. Because you want to have the quantity. And positive feedback. So brainstorming mode is this. Welcome wild, crazy ideas and give every post-it note a short, positive feedback. So every time someone in your group posts your idea on the sheet of paper, then react with positive feedback, saying like, like it, like Facebook. And that's cool, yeah, nice, wow. Some, you know, positive feedback. Even if you don't think it's nice, okay? <laughs> that's the point. So don't block, you know, the other's idea, so please, be like this, okay? Positive feedback. So these are the rules, okay? Brainstorming, go for quantity, go for quantity. And try to, you know, write down and say easy to understand. And positive feedback. And connect your brains, build on the ideas of others. Okay? So, what I want you to do now is to do brainstorming to think about, generate ideas for how you deliver that value proposition. You define the value proposition, so now it's time to think about the solution. How you deliver the solution. And for brainstorming, one another very important point is what you are brainstorming about. Clarify what you are brainstorming. Is it a solution, definition, recognition? You can brainstorm in many different things. 
So ask the question that is suitable for brainstorming. Now you want to generate ideas to deliver, how you deliver that value. That, that's going to be very closer to solution now. And what is the question for the brainstorming to get the result, to get the outcome, output? First, you have to think about that. Question that the diversity might help to answer. Question that are interesting to expand the solution space. So how might we questions would be, would be helpful? And stay in innovative thinking mode. You do not want in the box solution as output. So this is an example. This is an example to think about new communication device. If this is the, you know, the theme that you are thinking, your team is thinking about, some new communication device you are working on, then one, this is a one example to ask for the brainstorming. How might we communicate face to face without a common language. <coughs> direct question. If you, que if you ask questions directly, then it's going to be, what are the new communication device? What other new communication device is the very big, but is it easy to answer? Very direct. But what about this? How might we communicate face to face without a common language. This is one example of asking the question or brainstorming. These are the examples of the brainstorming output. How might we communicate face to face without a common language? It could be hand gestures, body gestures, facial expressions, dance moves. So it's you know associated and you can think of these. But how about by asking what are the new communication device? Maybe it's very hard to get these results for brainstorming, out of brainstorming activity. You're following? <laughs> Good. So now, what I want you to do first is to come up with a brainstorming question to explore the solution space. Now you have value proposition, so the next step is to generate the idea for solution. What are the good questions to ask for brainstorming to come up with the solution, to explore the solution space? for your stated value proposition. Write down clearly what you're brainstorming and conduct the brainstorming. And first, just think about, you know, discuss and what it's going to be the question for the brainstorming and just start brainstorming. And once you think that this, is, this will not work, you can change, you can change the brainstorming question, okay? So, spend some time to think what is the right question to ask to expand your solution space. And with the, this you know, question to ask for the brainstorming, do the brainstorming for 20 minutes, including the time for the coming up, coming up with the right question to ask. As I said before, you can change the question. So just discuss, okay, let's go with uh, this question and do the brainstorming. And don't forget the four rules, okay? Positive feedback and vocal quantity and connect the brains. Okay, so 
and give you 20 minutes for brainstorming. Let's start.
อะไรเลยนะเ
today we're going to do this. Usually we don't do this. Usually we don't do this. After brainstorming, usually we do other work, other activities. But today we just pick one idea out of the ideas you have just generated. So please pick one idea out of what you have generated. Okay? I give you five minutes. One idea for solution. Or you can combine several solutions into one solution. Okay?
analysis is the, you know, uh, you have to define the value chain and stakeholders. How do they relate to each other? The stakeholders, between the stakeholders, what kind of value are chained? So CBCA clarifies who are the stakeholders? How does the value flow? And how does material or energy flow, other, other values, what kind of values are flowing, and information, any kind of values are flowing between the stakeholders. And it clarifies who you are designing for, and who you are important customers, who is the important customers. And it looks like this. This. this is an example of cardiographic monitor. Cardio ele electrocardiographic monitor, sorry. Electrocardiographic monitor produced by, manufactured by Hewlett Packard. This is the device. And these are the stakeholders. And these are the flow of the values. Now these are the steps to write down the CBCA. First, you identify important stakeholders. Users, payers, people around users, business partners, authorities, etc. So in this case, this is Hewlett Packard, the manufacturer of the device. And this is a doctor. And this is the patient. Uh, this, in this case, cardiographic monitor is for the patient who has the heart disease, but it doesn't look actually the heart disease, that, <laughs> but try to think that way, okay? So, between those stakeholders, what value are flowing? Identify the values and which direction they are flowing. So identify value flow between stakeholders and write down like it's if it's a money, then write down like this, or some icons for product, service, and information, and some claims and regulations too. In this case, Hewlett Packard manufacture cardiographic monitor and they sell this product to a doctor and doctor pays for it and these are the peripherals they want to sell together with this product and the doctor let the patient use this device and 
he's going to monitor his disease, and he's going to, looking at the result of the uh, monitoring, he's going to diagnose the situation, symptoms. Okay, so these are the stakeholders, and these are the flows of the values between stakeholders. And next step is to analyze. Who is important customers? Any value balance, input and output. Please take a look at the input and output. Any, any balance? between input and the output, and then is there any negative effect from what you can see? So, if you analyze this CBCA, you can think of this. Because the money mark here just goes from the doctor. So he would think, my money just goes out. I'm not gaining much. Is there somebody who can cover this expense? You can think of this. So after analysis, it's time for synthesis. Now you come up with new stakeholder, which is insurance company, to cover the cost for the doctor. And in order to make this happen, this CBCA would need this government permission to the insurance company to cover this expense by the insurance company. And this new value chain will be emerged. So this is all about the CBCA. It is very, very simple. But the one thing is just focusing on values, value chain, and try to draw the chain of the values. Only the values, focus on the values. Okay? So, now you have all the teams, you have one single so, uh, solution idea. So try to think about the stakeholders of your idea, of your solution, and try to think about the value flow between those stakeholders. Okay? Discuss and create CVCA of your concept or ideas for a new healthcare life logging device or service. If it's not um, something to do with life logging, then it's okay, but try to think that way, life logging and consider the values that are not only money and goods or services. So who are the main stakeholders? It doesn't have to be very, very detailed description. Just main stakeholders. Who are the main stakeholders? And what are the values for those each stakeholders? And how are the values changed? Okay? So I give you 30 minutes, but one thing, be before uh, I give you this 30 minutes, I'm going to explain one more thing about the value. As I said before, values are not always the money, right? Values are not always the money or product or services itself, but there are several other values. That means values are not always tangible. Sometimes there are intangible values. So this one is example for souvenir from Japan for family. If dad, when they, uh, one dad went to Japan and get this souvenir for his family, they pay money to get this product. And this is one of example of value chain, right? But it seems like supply chain. It's same as the supply chain. 
product and money. And these are tangible. But behind this, there is this value chain. What makes that buy this product is this. Behind this, dad, so afterwards, they, you know, the dad comes home, he would give this souvenir to mom, and she would say, oh, so you went, you went to Japan. This is origami, actually, origami and chiogami. Or, do you know origami? Origami, yeah. Chiyogami is actually a, a beautifully patterned origami. So these are the present for the gift for the, the woman, mostly. So the mom would say, oh, so you went to Japan, how was it? And this kind of conversation emerges. And this is a, a very big value to him, for his family. And when the mom gives this to daughter, you know, they, they make the crane out of this origami and they give to daughter. Then daughter would say, Mom, this is great. And this conversation would happen. And daughter would say, Daddy, what is chiyogami? And this new conversation, a new relationship, communication emerges. So these are very, very important values for dad. So behind what can be seen like as a tangible value chain, there are several other value chains and several other stakeholders. So try to think of these two. See, this is the supply chain, tangible value. But this part is intangible, but this is very, very important part of the value chain. Okay? So, here. I can give you 30 minutes. CVCA. Discuss and create CVCA. Of the solution. You have just, you decided to make it as your solution. Okay? So if you have question, please raise your hand. We will come to you. OK, so 30 minutes.
Income people to maintain uh, health in the fun way, happy and fun way. And basically, we are talking about chemistry matching of the low income people. The reason is that the low income people they work hard, they don't have time to fight uh, women uh, or men, they just work. And basically, in the society, low income people they are disregarded. In the society, the level of them is quite low. So uh, our solution will help them to get the position in the society, okay? And that comes into our uh, our concept. And basically, we have um, we have a user who who are low income people, and then we have the devices that uh, we support this low income. The device this device will help the low income people to find the matching of their future wife or girlfriends or friend. Basically, the device will measure all the uh, chemistry in the body, like um, you know, uh, hormones and heartbeat and so on, life activities. That means if this one have a good exercise, they do a lot, uh, he do a lot of exercise, and he find that this person do a lot of exercise, have the same uh, lifestyle, then they can match quite well, of course. This person will not like the, um, uh, uh, the, the other person who, who don't have the same life, lifestyle, okay? And uh, the, data, uh, the data devices uh, are funded by the social foundation, uh, which could be funded by, by his boss, his own company, because his own company is also, uh, also would like to have the data from the user who are working, because it's also related to the welfare of working. Uh, if you work too hard, you are not happy, and then you could have the uh, the effect. So the the labor union will uh, will get this data from the boss, and then uh, help to improve the life uh, work life balance in the in the companies. And so uh, also, um, I would like to invite Kunju to talk more about the <laughs> the benefit. You know, we we could help. We work in team, right? <laughs> Okay, I, I will I will go a little bit further. Um, then then she, you know, she's a research researcher. She would like to work. Uh, she will talk about the government later. But right now, uh, I would like to talk further. The labor union are connected to the to the hospitals, uh, and this this hospital has the library archive, which contain all the information. So the boss of the owner of the company will benefit from from this data a lot. And um, looking at the government, the government can get the data from the social foundation, and that means if 
uh, this government can, you know, uh, can plan, can educate the people to have, uh, if they are ready to have uh, uh, babies or uh, uh, to educate them to that, uh, to have a population planning also. This also benefit the countries. And uh, the major uh, supplier of the of the data device is the mobile company. And that uh, he, uh, this well, my company can fund the social foundation as well. And yeah, please. Yeah, and also from the health report as well. It's not only uh, chemical matching, but it's also generate and estimate the kind of gene and chromosome. Like, do you have a positive gene chromosome or not, or negative kind of gene? And you can see from there an ancestor chain, right? You you can. So the humanity will improve their quality and beyond like extend that limitation of humanity. We will have less disease and less syndrome as well. Yeah, it's kind of, uh, this one is quite important. Library archive is not like tangible library, it can be inten intangible, like data it can sell. And also you can see kind of family chain, like you can record and uh, estimate. And also this kind of the heart of the project, it can sell the data to the kind of public and private company. And therefore, the data that uh, the company can find their own labor to work into their company. And therefore, the company, that's why they support the social foundation. So it's kind of looping like completely. So everything is basically interconnected. It start from very small thing, right? Like one people to death, but it's not dead. Like like don't worry, but we dead with the reason, yeah. right? Oh. <laughs> okay, let me give some few comments. So first one, as a C, as a CBCA. So everyone understands. So they use uh, many figures. It's very easy to understand each other. This is a discussion tool. So this is a very, very good way. So visualize your idea and based on that discuss. So you can mutually understand and communicate very well and get into the very good idea. So please use a figure as much as possible. And as for the idea, they Focusing on the low income person. So, this is also a good point to you focusing on. And your idea, okay, maybe there is some a hurdle to implement, like, a, okay, based on data, you have to select the match a person. It might be difficult, okay, but you might solve that problem. And one more point is others are similar. So, your system, your idea is so big. So, you have to think about it. Starting from where? How you expand into this level of the idea? So you cannot start everything together. So it's hard. Your government, hospital, and the mobile, mobile, so many stakeholders. Maybe you can, you have to think about starting from which part and how you can extend to up to here. As a final idea is good, so after then you have to think up a step to implement your idea. Okay, thank you very much. Social, right? So, with the empathy between the people and talking and 
between friends and family. Uh, therefore, we, we found this sector is a, is a faculty problem, and we have a technology, wearable technology. If we can match between this paradigm to this paradigm, they might gonna be something new. So uh, our team picked this as a, uh, our first uh, target to solve Okay, and then we can after that. Okay, the problem definition that we define, uh, how might we help people share their mental problems? So, by the proposition, we use empathize people, be bold and bonded. So now let's go to uh, let's go to our chat. <laughs> so we we pick up uh, detected sensor building fashion accessory such as earring, shoes, or necklace. So because it's a fashion lifestyle that appeal to uh, many people. Uh, the example of this loop, we uh, use uh, earring as an example. We start uh, the, the most important uh, customer, is a user, uh, friends, and family. This is a main customer. And uh, the next stakeholder is doctor, service provider for big data, and jeweler, coach shop, and government. Government will be like a, a uh, uh, and uh, organization to create an uh, ecosystem or policy. So um, we start from user. User uh, connect to doctor uh, in terms of value chain, and doctor connect to big data or service provider, and uh, connect to jeweler or uh, clothes shop fashion. So this part, uh, they connect uh, in terms of value money, tangible value. Um, the other part, user. Uh, as we said, value proposition is uh, empathize people, be bold and bonded. We create connect uh, among users, friends, and family. Uh, this part, we according to big city like today, people always people feel lonely, and sometimes they are they are depressed. They want to talk to someone, but nobody. When we, want, when we are in that situation. So technology will help in this, uh, to solve this. So uh, we use an earring uh, as a sensor. Mm -hmm. When people laugh, so uh, this sensor will send like happiness, vibration, uh, vibration <laughs> uh, to, uh, to, uh, to uh, their, their network. So it seems like a valuable preposition of this group, uh, like create bonding. Uh, the message or uh, statement that uh, uh, user, uh, we think like a thank you uh, for standing by me, it seems like a make them feel someone standing by by uh, by, by 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 herself. Uh, for other, we will show like a, their bonding, uh, let them know, let uh, customer know that uh, uh, she never have uh, to walk alone. So it seems like connect uh, people together. Um, but uh, Miss, uh, okay, lecture told us that the other value uh, for the outside stakeholder, we should think about uh, their value, no, not only money. So intangible for this group, we seem like a, uh, they create like a, a CSR policy for their company to be like a good citizen company to create uh, to create some product. Uh, to create the product that uh, de de deliver uh, deliver good things to society. Yeah. That's all. Uh, and I think with for the doctors section, I think with this new technology, they could further de develop it into other stuff. Yeah. One thing that uh, in terms of money, advertiser advertiser will be like again is. The concept similar to the other group, uh, advertiser will we will like get the money to create like other revenue model for uh, their company also. Okay, so uh, yeah. in, in conclusion, so we are gonna build a, a earring that can sense how much you depression by sensing how much you laugh. If you don't laugh in one day, you can it's me and you something wrong. Something wrong. <laughs> you have to share with friends and tell your friends to tell your joke to you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. So, music, very interesting. And uh, this idea, just a few hours of this afternoon session, 
but the idea is so detailed and so wide range of considerations, so many stakeholders and so many aspects such as technology side or money side or the feeling side. Okay? So the I think your group has fully understood what is CBCA. Okay, CBCA is a little bit difficult to understand in a short time, but they have already fully understood because the tangible items and the intangible items are put in the same chart together. And there are several kinds of stakeholders, not just users and friends, but governments, doctors, and other stakeholders. So the wide variety of stakeholders is also put in the same chart. Okay. So during this very short time, you have already established very detailed image or detailed design of your product. So it's very good and so much uh, advancement of this afternoon's uh, discussions. So thank you very much for the good discussion. So at the beginning of this 2x2 two two, or just a problem definition, you don't have any clear image such, like, such as this one. But through the discussion of the CBCA, the, the idea is not gradually, but to rapidly make very concrete or very detailed. This is a benefit of CBCA. So the, please be patient during this discussion, two by two, or brainstorming, or problem definition. But at the point of CBCA discussion, the, your level of ideas so much improved in a short time. This is a very important and interesting point, interesting point of CBCA. Okay, please remember how to generate CBCA when you uh, make it concrete or very detailed. Okay, again, thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you um, for your hard work. And as uh, Professor Ioki has just explained, these uh, tools and techniques are very good tools to share your what your what's in your mind, to share the you know the conclusion and what's your the idea of within your group. Just last minute question for me. Uh, can we work on, I mean, in the real situation, you don't have to have just one CBCA, right? You can have a lot of them. We can come back to the viral population and then one more. Perfect, perfect question. Yes, this is just a uh, you know, two-day workshop. So we have just done it once for each uh, work activity. But for the real project, you have so many CBCAs, and one, once you're done with the CBCA, you want to go back to the previous work, like problem definition, two by two. You, you iterate so many times, and gradually your idea and solution is going to be matured and in more details and leading to the conclusion, okay? And these tools, are good not only for the visualizing but also good when you have to explain what you have thought about to your boss or something sometimes you have to ask yourself you have to you don't remember how you you know in, you know that have led to this idea but you can go back you can trace back your idea how the then trace back your thinking way of thinking and when you go back Without these you know, evidence, you have to go back to the beginning. But with these tra you know, things you can if, you know, take a look, then you can you know, follow the trace back. And here, maybe we have some other ideas for this value, right? So you don't have to start scratch from scratch again. But if you know what you are now 
in doing. Then you go back to that stage. Okay, so what you have experienced today is marshmallow challenge for cultivating innovative mindset. And also these two, two three tools, defining a problem and value proposition and CVCA. And these are a design thinking and well design thinking is actually a starting started in mechanical engineering faculty. Because the mechanical engineering, the business minded, also it's done in the uh, business schools too, right now. So this is, design thinking is not about the, you know, only thinking about, you know, designer's way, but it's based on the um, skill and knowledge and capability to think logically. That's the basic for the design thinking. So engineering people tend to use their you know, left brains, try to think things logically, but sometimes they need something not logical way. Like I first explained about the empathy, you know, design thinking. So that's why they, Stanford University, started this program, design school. Okay, and also this way of thinking is implemented in business schools right now, Harvard Business School and Kellogg School, very, very famous, prominent uh, business schools in the world. They imp are implementing the design thinking course. Okay, so for you, I think many of you have um, domain in design and design thinking is not only for the you know the how part how you implement this idea but what you are going to think and what you're going to provide and why you're going to provide in these phases in very early stages it's very very important to think about this and implement design thinking. Okay, not only the how part. Try to use, utilize the design thinking in why and what you're going to implement and achieve. Okay, that's all for today. And this is kind of additional thing. Homework for tomorrow. Okay. Find something innovative. And tomorrow morning, some I, I, I ask some of you to share. Okay, find innovative solution. Something like product, service, policy, strategy, or any other type of solutions. And concisely describe why you think it is innovative. And something that has changed or will change people's perspective or way of life. Something innovative. This is just one example, but this, something like this. This is the electric outlet. Usually, electric outlet is you know, on the wall. <coughs> and when you want to extend, you use this and then connect to your PC. But this one goes directly to your PC without using this extension cords. So this is a you know way of change one one change of your way of thinking, way way of look at looking at things. So this could change the people's you know, perspective. This is one example. So try to find something something innovative and try to explain in very concise concise uh, description okay tomorrow morning okay so thank you very much for a long work and he's going to uh, explain about the tomorrow's schedule
But now I want to thank you for all the hard work. I appreciate it very much. Thank you very much. Okay, it's 10.15, so we're going to start now. Sawadika. Um, Sawadika. Good morning. And thank you for coming for the second day. Today is the day two. And first part is for the homework. So I want some, I mean, two or three uh, people to present what you have found as an innovative thing. Who wants to share? One, two, three, four, or four. Okay. Like, uh, they also like extend a product 
afterwards. So they expand the new inventory, by, um, they increase that sale from the books to like other uh, products to, to like everything around the world from A to Z. And then after they like, bought many uh, computers to uh, develop their system, then they also like uh, have like provide a web service for people like like uh, Dropbox or Netflix to rent the cloud from Amazon. And then um, apart apart from working system, they also like uh, increase the product innovation. From they sell like the physical books, they change to sell like the ebooks online. So um, from the ebooks, they can also save the course from warehouse and shipping becomes irrelevant. So they don't have a, they don't need any warehouse or shipping system anymore. And then uh, they change their business model. Like um, they sell cheap equipment. Like the Kindle is not very, uh, it's not like very cheap, but it's not too expensive for for everyone to be a reader to like kind of afford it. And then they make money on the ebooks that they sell. Uh, uh, after that, um, they have to change the, the supplier relation. Like they change from buying books to buying the rights from suppliers. And then uh, the recent one, the products and business model innovation, they change, like they don't change, uh, they uh, kind of expand by like uh, from a la carte books. <coughs> like uh, people can buy the books from them. Now uh, they can like pay monthly to read its buffet. Like, uh, Kind of, I, I call it like kind of a library online, online library. So pretty much you are like paying a library fee each month. So from from this innovation, they expand the targets, and then they have to change how to deal with the suppliers, and then they have to adjust the book selection from uh, like kind of to match the targets. I think this is like very innovative system from Amazon. It's like kind of uh, everything is kind of related, and they don't like they open it uh, more and more. They don't like open and then close. They do it, do with them all together. I'm not so sure it's like very accurate or not because I'm like uh, as a designer view. Yeah, it's pretty much it. all the explanation and detailed description about your know, analysis from Amazon. And um, the thing I want everyone to think is um, the value. I mean, the, I yesterday I said that please put the, how, what is the innovativeness for this in concise sentence, very short. So if you take a look at the, you know, the user side value, Maybe you can help, you know, put it in one sentence or two sentences. Okay. How is this going to be? It's like they uh, use the innovative thinking way to make like the same product, make it like more innovation, like make this like the existing product become innovative by uh, people around the world can uh, use it. Mm -hmm. So is, is there any change without the Amazon and with the Amazon uh, on the user side? Yes. This is the difference, big difference, isn't it? Yeah, it's yeah. a big difference. Yeah. So people can reach the books easier or the, the products easier, much easier, and then like cost much lower and faster. Yes, yeah. yes that's good. Yes, that's a very you know, concise. And, and then you want to explain in details. Okay. Right? <laughs> yeah. 
So yeah, Amazon is a big innovation. Yes, of course, a you know, business model case too. So yes. So with the Amazon, it's for, for users. It's very easy for them to find a very rare book too, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, before Amazon, it was very, very hard to yes. find, to get the yeah. very, this yeah. rare People book. have to walk by the yes, yes. bookstore. Yes. Yeah. And it you know, became so easy yeah. to get that book. They take all these problems. Yes. Like, I, I always find like the hard time to find design books that are like, quite rare. Yeah. Mm -hmm. OK. Thank you very much. Thank you for your <laughs> The next one is oh you can you Hello, good morning. Uh, actually, today I have two things. One thing is, I think for me, is innovation for this world. As Leonardo said, global warming is an issue. <laughs> and another one is my personal innovative thing, but maybe I will not speak about it today. If you, if you want to know, you can ask me later. I love this one. Uh, if I know who knows the name of Bayan Slate? No one? <laughs> he, uh, he, he's just a boy who loves diving, like me, I love diving. Uh, and he dives everywhere, Hawaii, America, Philippines, Indonesia, and he found that he thought he see plastic more than fish. Yeah, and he, one day he decide if human made plastic, why don't they clean it? Just made up and dump it to the world. And he, he and his friend begin to talk together and I want to clean the plastic out of the sea. And he put a swim and a net and just so we somewhere and get plastic just like to test the plankton if he made a net and get uh, plastic into the net and how about the ocean, how about the plankton that stuck in the net so keep trying, try out ever, swim, swim and just like he test even how the plankton can survive if you use a board or a ship with a net to get a plastic. And yeah, he did, I watched the test yesterday or search in the internet. And I found his solution is very complicated, just like he researched a lot. So Pangpong can survive in 5G, so that is not a problem for the net anymore. <laughs> just like when the ship moves, so the Pangpong will hit the net. He think about, so what next? Just make a big net and let the ship drag the net along and get the plastic inside the net. That costs a lot of fuel, costs a lot of money. You, have, you need a big ship. 
and at last, yeah, last year, at the end of the year, it got a lot of price in South Korea about the in uh, green innovation. This one is a uh, fund by a clean ocean project and will be used real in. This is an island near the Japan that use a lot of plastic to be reused. And he designed something like this. This is a biggest structure floating on the sea that use no fuel, use no power, use no energy. How how can I get a lot of plastic by itself? How can she clean itself? So he research about the The top image, it is a sea current. It's there, always be there. Change some time, but it always be there. So you just put the net and open it directly to the sea, or sea current and let the plastic and let the sea clean itself. Just, it will bring the plastic into the net itself. You don't need to move anything. Sea current will work itself. And when it changes, just turn around and receive more plastic. So he calculated if the uh, green leaf, a uh, green, sorry, green piece clean the ocean, uh, in two or three months they can get six containers of plastic. With this innovation, he can get 55 containers per, almost per month or two months. And I think that helped our world a lot. So in this year, yeah, they will start using this project. And he thinks more further that if I got, if I get a lot of plastic, a rubbish plastic, what next? So if I sell the plastic from the sea, I will get about five million dollars per half year or something. That really rich without doing nothing, without doing anything. Just let the sea give you a rubbish a plastic and sell it, and sell the plastic that float over the sea, and you will be rich. And one word I love the most is, if you think more further about the money, if you think something better than the money, the money will come later. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. This one, you want to show? Okay, so again, in concise. Oh. <laughs> I think the key value is yeah, key value. Clean our sea, useless money, useless effort, effective, and help the global warming. As Leonardo said, <laughs> it used to be uh, consuming a lot of energy <laughs> to do that. And no, so before this. Oh. Before this, cleaning the oh, sea, you yes, yes. require a lot of energy and a lot of money yes. to do that cost. But after this, how did it change? Oh, uh, before you need ships, you need fuel, you need electric power, you need manpower to get just a small amount of rubbish, yes. get rid of the sea, and then after this, after this you make the sea clean itself. So. You just put the device there, energy from solar power, and sea current to let the plastic into the net. And it's just a surface, so fish underneath can swim normally. Mm. Okay. Yeah, I understand very well. That, that's great. Thank you. That description, yes. <laughs> Thank you very much. So uh, try to um, make it concise so that everybody can, you know, understand. Th this is really important to present, you know, make presentation about everything. First, what is the innovativeness, and how before this and after this, how things have changed, so that they can, you know, catch the, you know, the meaning. Okay. 
Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much.
and then they are. Let's uh let me share it this way. Uh, I think we have uh internet on the mobile, right? So they are I will share to the pin. Try to add that from the YouTube and everybody can. Uh, if, if everybody can uh, watch by uh, this uh, 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 So everybody understand what he is talking about without looking at the video. Yes, yes. This uh, challenge compared to the you make a DIY and understand the mechanism. <laughs> After 
23 minutes have passed. Take a flat spoon and very carefully lift out your water bubbles and put them just in a bath full of regular water to stop the reaction. And there you have it. Your edible water bottles. And just so you can see, the inside of these are liquid. <laughs> when you're all done, don't forget to reward yourself with a drink. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. And what is the use for this? How how actually I think how, uh, how to eliminate the plastic bottle forever. Okay. And any suggestion for other use for some some special kind of people maybe this would work for Actually, this is uh, just a bottle tie that he uh, <laughs> challenged campaign to do DIY. But by the way, this year the research is uh, improved to make a bottle of liquid, make a solid stronger to do a commercial containing. We this one. Uh -huh. Okay. Thank you. Maybe uh, this should have some, you know, certain use case for this 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 product. Not only the uh, as you they have uh, another video for the founder of this uh this uh, is a this uh, Yes. Uh, but uh, allow me almost seventy minutes. And you uh, yeah, have a lot of yes, yes. you can serve. Yeah, but maybe you can think of you know, some special you know, use case for this product so that you know people certain kind of people have this might change their lives, right? So maybe I should say it's not much to the, the shed alive, but it can tell the world, tell the world, go in or something like that. And because of, you know about it, this plastic is uh, stay forever, so matter what, we die already. Yeah, but it can consume into the my body or something like that. This the yeah. right part. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so you got it, right? The innovativeness. Okay, thank you very much. Sorry if you stayed it too long, and, and sorry we have no time for. I'm sorry. Um, we have to go back to our work, uh, the rest of the workshop. I want, I want if I have time to, you know, for everyone to do this, but it's not. Okay, so we go back to the day two. Okay, are you ready for the work? <laughs> okay, today we're going to do prototyping. Prototyping. I know that uh, most of you are familiar with, familiar with the prototyping. Because most of you, many of you are designers and would be designers, so um, you have experienced in many cases for the prototyping. But I want to ask you this question again: What is prototyping? What is prototyping? Is it a mock-up? Is it engineering model? This one, this description is from uh, this one. Introduction to Design Thinking Process Guide from D-School. D-School, who knows, who doesn't know about D-School in Stanford? D-School, everybody knows, you don't know. It's a design, design school in Stanford, and it's a kind of a 
a kind of father of the design thinking in the world. And it's uh, started by the a guy called David Kelly, and he started this the design school in Stanford, and they introduce this kind of booklet free for free, and you can download it on on the internet. It's called an Introduction to Design Thinking Process Guide, and it has the parts for the prototyping mode. It it, ex, it, it explains five modes necessary for design thinking, and one of them is the prototyping mode. And this is the description they write for the prototyping. The prototyping mode is the iterative generation of artifacts intended to answer questions that get you closer to your final solution. So, prototype is to build, to know what you want to know. So you have to make a question and let the prototype answer. So prototyping is to make, to know what you want to know. First you have to make a question. Now, this is a kind of quiz. <coughs> prototyping, prototype versus final solution. Because the prototyping is something you do to get closer to the final solution, this one is Unica. It's a, one of the vehicles for personal mobility produced um, in Honda. And this one is Iron Man. You, do you know Iron Man? Yes. yes. <laughs> OK, so four choices. Number one, this one is prototype. Number two. This one, Iron Man, is a prototype. Number three, both are prototype. Number four, both are final solution. Okay, both. Unicab is the prototype. Raise your hand. Unicab is a prototype. Two, two. Okay, number two, Iron Man is a prototype. One, two, three, three, four. Both are prototypes. One, two, three, four, five, five, six. Both are final solution. Oh, many of you, many of you. Okay, the answer is Unicap is a prototype. So number one is the right answer. This is not what we say, but they say, Honda says. Unicap is a prototype. They say that Unicap is a prototype of near future personal mobility product. It is currently validating its concept of mobility that lands in human and human environment. So they say this is a prototype to test, to validate its concept, which is mobility that blends in human and human environment. Yes. Um, can you have a prototype that you have, you, you have already sold in the market? I mean, you sell already, and then you get the feedback from the customers that you can improve the, the, the existing prototype to be more ready. Prototyping, when it's on the market and yeah. you sell it, prototype, I don't think it's called prototype. So if, you know, uh, before, it's on the market, but if you don't you know, charge it, then it could be prototype, I guess. So, Beta but, but I think the, the new model, maybe you could already show into the market to mm -hmm. specific people and then you get those feedback to improve the, 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 the product further. Yes, yes. Yeah. That, that's, you know, every, every you know, company is doing. But once it's 
marketed, then it's not it's a model change or improvement, but the, the prototype is to you know become closer to the final product. So this is the pro my final product. You just you decide it, then it's a final product, right? And this one is Iron Man suit is the final solution. This is what they say, again. This Iron Man, this Iron Man suit was designed and built to escape from the villain's prison. It served the purpose, therefore it is the final solution. So serving the purpose is the key. If it serves the purpose, then it's the final solution. So what I want to say is this. Prototype is not about the look. A prototype looks rough, the final solution looks neat. No. So prototype is built to answer questions. The question is important. What do you want from the prototyping? You have to decide that first. Okay. So prototype is created to get closer to your final solution, and final solution is developed on findings and insights acquired, acquired from prototyping testing. And there are two types of questions prototype can answer. Verification and validation. Are you familiar with the verification and validation, these two words? Are you? Okay. So, what is the difference? What is the difference? Verification and validation. Prototyping for verification, prototyping for validation. Can anybody? Okay. You want? So uh, I used verification and validation in terms of engineering mm -hmm. software or something. So we use verify to uh, check is it the function is right or is it do what I want it to do? Or uh, and then we use validate for uh, compare mm -hmm. to something compared to the data that this model is uh, can imitate your your something like that. Mm -hmm. So verification and validation, but there is a difference actually. So I'm gonna explain. Verification. You verify functionality of the design. You verify performance of the design. So verification is something you do. Something you do to know you are doing the thing in the right way. So do the right, do the thing right confirmation. This is the purpose of the verification. And validation. You validate the design, you validate the concept. Validation is something you do to know you are doing the right thing. Are you doing the right thing? And are you doing the thing right? It's different. Right? So even if you are doing the thing right, maybe you are not doing the right thing. So you have to know if you are doing the right thing first. Very easy, simple example. If, okay, uh, a mother cooks um, some, you know, dish for your kid, and he, she got the recipe, and she, according to the recipe, she made this, you know, dish completely perfectly, but the kid didn't like that. So she didn't do the validation. So she, yeah, she didn't do the validation, but she did the verification. 
it was completely, you know, following to the recipe. But the kid didn't like it. Something like this. It's very simple. Though. So, verification is from doing the exactly the right recipe or choosing the right recipe? Choosing the right recipe is validation for your kid. She didn't, you know, she failed in validation, but she, you know, completely did the verification. So she followed the right, you know, completely to follow the recipe. So that's the difference. But there is a big difference. Okay. So, prototype and test. Prototype is never a goal. Prototype is never a goal. It's created to look for the goal. Prototype without test is merely a visual aid for, of your presentation. So prototyping, if you do the prototyping, you have to do the test. Without testing, it's just a visual aid. Okay? So, so often, in, in many cases, many people would do the prototype with 3D printers. It's but it's just one kind of many prototype methods and techniques. So you have to know that your, your method for prototyping is the right way. Look for your right prototype method and testing method. And depends on what you do for the prototyping. And if there is no good way for the prototyping of what you're thinking, you can develop one if there is no suitable one. Okay, so these are the questions, very, very important questions for prototyping. You have to ask good question that you want to find the answer by creating prototype. And it helps you to clarify the purpose of the prototype. You must have the purpose for prototype. So first, ask yourself, why you prototype? and test. What's the purpose? And what you prototype and test? What do you do to know this? And how you do it? So these questions you have to ask yourself first. And there are many uh, different types of prototyping and techniques. And every type has strong points and weak points. So you have to choose prototype and type based on your question. So ask a question first. And this one is a 3D printer. And most of the time, um, often people would use this to, to know the shape, exact shape of what you're making. And this one is a um, suborbital, uh, suborbital flight or space travel. This is a prototype for space travel. And it goes up into the space and come back. So this is a suborbital light. And this one is one of the a prototype method for website design. It's a called framework, wire framing. And this one is a prototype for satellite. Satellite, satellite to know the how this solar panel deploys in the space. It, this is a very small one. Okay, and when do you do the prototype? When do you do it? Suppose this is the timeline for your project. project. 
concept phase, strategy phase, execution phase. Where, which phase do you do the, the prototyping? Yes, yes, yes. Especially for the validation, right? So, it's very important to confirm you're doing the right thing in early phases of the project. If you don't check if you're doing the project, if you're doing the right thing, and you just go, and here maybe you do the verification, then like the you know mom cooking, <laughs> if this is okay, but at the end you fail to know that this is not the right thing, then you have to go back here again. So this is very important to do this activity in this phase. So early validation, we call it. This mindset is a key to, to your success. So we're going to um, introduce some of the real cases. This is a prototyping for wearable time-telling device. This is actually a case done by uh, our student design project team in two, two, 2013. They made a wearable time telling device, a concept that to have you know something on your nails, on your fingertips. So they made this. They tried on several paper made fake nail time watch for half a day and they spent they, they wore them and spent half a day and they realized they knew that it does not bother much they could survive with this but they knew that they don't need anything on their thumb so this is a finding out of the prototyping so early validation of the concept one example and this is another example from IDEO. IDEO is familiar to you too? IDEO, yes. IDEO is also um, founded by David Kelly, right? Who, you know, who is the father of design thinking. And this one, do you know this case? Do you know? Okay, this one is the prototyping that uh, IDEO people made while they have the first meeting. This project was built in the first meeting of IAO and medical doctors. So this is the uh, prototyping for surgical instrument. What is the, how, how do they you know, hold the surgical instrument? And it was built with stuff around the meeting table. So the IAO people talked with the doctors and they were talking about the design of the uh, surgical instrument, and they wanted to know how doctors hold this, you know, kind of instrument. And the IO people just, you know, uh, find some of these very, um, you know, something around you, and get put together, and something like this to confirm that how you know doctors are holding. So this is one of the example. So it helped to, to communicate the concept in very early phase. And the instrument was developed like this. So this is the first prototype, and this is the final <coughs> solution. And this one actually got an award for the medical instrument. And this one, do you know about this? Have you ever seen this? No. This is another prototyping from IDEO case. I'm going to show you this. Dancing, I push the back button. 
prototype their smartphone app user interface. Very cost and time effective prototype, right? So creative creativity was confirmed how Apple would look and feel like in the early phase, very early phase. You don't have to write any single line, right, for the program. Usually for the you know, software prototyping is you have to make something on the screen. But before that, there are so many things you can do. Okay? So, and this is the final product. They wanted to, you know, make sure how it works. Yeah. And actually, uh, this is very popular. I hear that this is very popular uh, application for kids. Okay, so it's gonna be long, so I just stop here. If you wanna take a look, you can Google it, and you can take a look at the whole. So, now your, your turn. It's your turn. Now you saw a lot of examples. It's your turn. So, you and your team are prototyping, testing your idea or insight in one week. You now have a CBCA, which you have in your mind about the business model, so kind of business model. Yesterday you thought about it. So, you, now you want to do the prototyping for your project, okay? And you're going to do it in one week. Next week, you get together, it's suppose, suppose, okay? <laughs> Just suppose. So, you, you write an email to your team members about prototyping and testing the plan. Where to meet? What to bring, what you build, how to test, what is expected, and anything else you want to describe. Okay? And you have to make sure about what do you expect to know out of the prototype. First, you have to think about what do you expect to know? What is the question for the prototype? and plan for the prototyping. It's gonna be in next week. So write an email. So I give you 30 minutes for this activity. Okay? Just suppose, because we are not going to be here next week, so. <laughs> okay, clear? Clear, okay. So, 30 minutes, let's start. So while you're doing this work, you, you can take a look at the, any, you know, output from the yesterday activities, okay?
เหลือแต่ว่าเปลี่ยนเป็นเขียวกับแดงไหมก็ได้นะถ้าแดงคือแบบเราเปลเราจะต้องไปเรียนเรียนเรียนเรียนเรียนเรียนเรียนเรียนเรียนเรียนเรียนเรียนเรียนเรียนเรียนเรียนเรียนเรียนเรียนเรียนเรียนเรียนเรีย
with limited resources. You have limited resources right now because you don't have any preparation. You have to do it now. And test your prototype. And who do you prototype? You have so many people around you, including faculty members from Keio, faculty members from Tula, everybody. But not only the you know, members of your team. Don't do it within your members. Okay, you have to do this on non-team members. Okay, test. Okay, clear? Elon Musk is coming. I don't want to say that, but <laughs> he's coming. He's coming. Okay, so I'll give you 40, another 40 minutes. You have to do this, all this, make the prototype, and test it, and get the results. Okay, continue. <laughs>
Okay, so we TAs have chosen three teams. And the first team is here. I don't know your group name, team name, sorry. Navata. And Go Go here. And you guys. <laughs> Hi everyone. Uh, okay. <laughs> our team is um, Nawata. So uh, and our project is Watch with Watch Live. Okay. So um so you okay and before for, first of all we we, uh, we want to thank you uh, to the person that participate participate in our group. One is one is a mom and one is a um uh, <laughs> and her boys. Right, that um, you know, have a uh, weird problem. <laughs> okay, it's not a problem. Like a uh, weird concern. Okay. So, I Eric, Ma, Eric is here, right? Eric. Eric is here. Some pause, but he's here, right? Okay. <laughs> Okay. So um okay, uh uh first of all I want to talk with Eric first. Okay. Eric, do okay, assume that Eric is here. Okay? <laughs> Hi Eric. Oh he okay. Oh. Oh. Hi Eric, do you have a try? Yes. Okay, and you know, yeah, in in America, you know, they have like a lot of fast food, uh, a lot of junk food, so uh, a lot of shy and people there is like um fat and have a um problem about their weight, right? So uh, our groups uh, that think about it is that it is problem and we think this one is a um, solution and uh, um, serve that inside because people we care about their weight, their, their appearance and um, the parents will um, think about their child, right? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this story for about um, how to use uh, our product. Our product is um, uh, watch which watch right. It's a tracker weight right. Uh, weight tracker. Uh, this is really about the the, uh, the mom and the child right. The, uh, her boys and how she uh, he has a weight problem and her uh, mom want to take care about him and mom mom. Uh, to him to see the doctor, and the doctor will say about um, the uh, the tracker that can help to track their weight and their activity or their what what they what he eat, uh, why why he in um, school. The tracker will um, will track you his weight right and what he gets. Uh, and then mom can can see what are the data that is come out from the application, and mom can go to the community and talk about that and what happened in the school, and and you may see that in the canteen there's a lot of uh, junk food, and then um, mom and community can go to um, to the school and talk about this issue. Uh, moreover, this one can um, lead to the government or uh, the insurance company that concerned about uh, this issue or this problem. Okay. So uh, this one is uh, this is email that we will send out to our team member uh, uh, and uh, how to uh, how to um, test the prototype and we. Uh, I, I want to uh, introduce our engineer, <laughs> engineer ma uh, manager, to talk about this prototype first. Okay, uh, our company Nevacha is the best R&D company to find out the solution for the people. So we we, we found that uh, what it is in the design term, we need to make sure that it's friendly for user and flexible and it's a part of their life that. Uh, they feel that it's not the, the object that make more like uh, make them unhappy to use this. So 
we we try to use that easy the part of the your shoe. You don't worry that it is the okay. It may be not beautiful, but just a smaller one tap to track your wedge with the the flexible uh, low cell to measure your weight and you can make sure that uh, your wedge is within control or not because it shows that you know, we don't show the, 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 the number because you don't want to show everyone know that your weight right so it's just the color or the thing that you is visible for you when you take a look at it's okay you know? after we have lunch dinner your weight still in control this is a flexible so with this, we have many options, many design based on your preferred. You may be like this or like this. We have several design for you. So, okay. uh, we have prototype one. Oh, that's do it. <laughs> Uh, Navata prototype, we are sponsored by Sweden. Thank you. <laughs> okay, this one is a. Uh, we have a digital tab here to see. You just group down and no one can see it. You can make it private. And we have a small sheet here. Put it out and you can like a. Yeah, like a Nike like <laughs> And we can, we have a small detect underneath because your weight go down here. Yeah? So it can detect your weight by pressure. If it increase, just like a small increase. Yeah, so we decide to use a spot where it's comfortable and we go to the school, primary school, and ask one parent who have a child and have available time and question them some questions that like if it's comfortable for your child, just put it in and if it's comfortable enough. And how about color? How about style? The combination of the color. Do you like it? Do you think, do you have any feedback for us to improve our prototype? And how about it? How about your child food chair? Is it fit? Okay. And how about running, walking, playing? So some feedback is like a, some, some mother need more color for her her daughter, her child, she want pink one, but we prepared the blue and red one. So, and more style, maybe someone like a more fashionable, yeah. And size, yeah. Some some boy, some girl have a extra normal size. We have to prepare more XL size. So sorry to interrupt you, but Elon Musk doesn't have much time. Okay, sorry. Okay, so. <laughs> I, I want you to add, I want you to ask what was the testing and what was the what, what did you test and what was the result? We test uh, in short okay <laughs> we test user interface user experience how they feel is it really enough easy to see how the comfortable of the shoe and the data that track is accurate enough that's all that 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 the general we test. Yes. You tested. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. This is a tester. You're a tester. And so the result of the prototyping test was. Great. It's cool. I think mom and his son is happy. So our meeting now. Uh, extra size for the for the children, and uh, and we will contact the uh, government or insurance company for about the data that we're going to sort it out. Okay. So what is going to be your next activity? Is it the going to the insurance company? Yes, the insurance company, uh, the government, and after that, uh, our target is going to go up like um. Not, not go up, I'm sorry. Um, our target, our target is gonna be like uh, the people, the general people that concern a lot about the, the weight or about the appearance, about the health. Okay. Okay, I understand. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
You have to do it in five minutes before you see it, okay? In five minutes. Hey, hi everyone. Our team is Go Go. Go is being five in, in Japanese. Actually, we started with five person, but now it's only four left. And we start on the 5th of um, May. Oh no, March. So we, our group name is Go Go. Okay. So the, the problem definition of um, our team is how to make the, the sick people um, be proud to be sick. So we have developed the concept we call AMC is Automate um, Medical Center. This one, um, this is AMC Machines. So how we come up with that one? So here is a sick person. So we want to like this people uh, in our society to be proud to be sick by this machine. So when you get sick, you come to this machine, and then you first like, have to to um, take out your ID and scan your ID here, so we can get then we link to the the data that is here. So um, first you scan your ID, and then we will have like um, the detector to detect that you are the real sick people. But yeah, otherwise, it's like, not like the temperature or even like your maybe your eyesight, something. Uh -huh. So once you are the the real sick person, the door will open for you. And then when you walk in, you will see that. In, uh, in, oh, I just okay. this is the loop. So you will see the instruction here, like. And you but the instruction is will be both in um, vocal and also in the image. Yeah, and also inside the like touch screen too. So here's the touch screen, and this is the machine that contain all like the medical supplies. But uh, the supplies will come from doctor med uh, doctor uh, prescription. Just imagine like this yeah. one inside the vending machine. Yeah. So then you need like the, the mask or something. So this machine, is, this this door will open and you just take out the mask. Yeah. And if you want to like to kill the germ in your like in your outside um, in your body, that would be the spray from the roof of this machine spray out. So it's kind of like self cleaning your body. Yeah, and when you come to this screen, uh, it will like welcome you to the hero. And like we want to praise like all the sick people to be our hero in the society, and they can be proud. And the, uh, we also have the instruction inside. Okay, and question. Yeah. yeah. Question to ask for the prototyping. Yeah. And what did you test and what was the okay. results? Okay. We did test with boom. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the prototyping. The, the prototype that we did is this machine. Uh huh. For like for six people to use. And then why? Because uh, we want uh, to create like a solution for sick people to be like part of our normal society too, and then don't spread out like the sickness to other people. But there's some comment when we tested for the time with him. He said that how he can make sure that this machine is really clean and safe yeah. for other people to use after after he left the machine. So we just tell him that. Um, after he, he get out from step of this machine, this will be the self cleaning of this box. Right. And then ask if you can accept this um, concept or not. Uh, what is your answer? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, if you're sure. matching, mm, what can I say? Make some self sanitizing. Uh huh. Self. Uh, already self cleansing, and then make it make it a sign to. That, that notify me that object already self clean or, or just any indicators that that can uh, make me trust it. Yes. You buy it. Yeah. No, no, I will go in for free. Okay, <laughs> it's for free. It's for free. This, this box will um, be located in the in the public area like BTS or MRT. Yeah. Uh, you might be like kind of curious what is this thing? It's kind of like the file system, like the data from doctor, like you can uh, use from here, the data, like the medical data, yeah, so it's on file. Yeah. So just to summarize, this machine will have the, like, the big impact to our society. So we make the sick people be proud to be sick and like proud to stand up in the society and walk yeah. around other people. And other people also, they will feel like they are safe to walk outside as well. Yeah. What is going to be your next?
and maybe Putin campaign or the no, like just uh, go forward. Maybe test on their chance to get more people. Like the user interface, user yeah, experience for the touch screen that they can really use it. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. Do you want to guess what is this? Do you want to guess? Huh? <laughs> Actually, it's a fortune globe. Fortune globe. See, like a fortune globe. Uh, our target group, uh, we are focusing on the um, elderly people who don't want to go to the hospital don't want to go to, uh, to see the doctor because they thought that um, they are still uh, healthy. So we uh, developed the application to detect the symptom of the, um, the health and turn it to be uh, the um, who going to tell him whether to go to the hospital is the fortune teller. So uh, no boom and cardboard will uh, explain the concept of this application with the animation. Okay. So uh, our prototype will work together with the devices and the application. So, but uh, in the what can I say behavior of our user, you need to know that every people. Don't want to wear. Don't 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 want to wear a some kind of model devices or, or maybe any high technology. So we just made this chip, so you can attach with uh, anything of your parents or maybe Rolex, Tagmoyer or any gold bracelet. So this chip will work with the battery, and then uh, I will show the situation for. Uh, this is the daughter who wants her mother to wear these devices like this. And then uh, her mother just uh, cooking. So there is some kind of signal like maybe heart rate, uh, blood pressure, or mean thermal. Detect notify to this application. This is uh, the window of, of the application. So, and then after that, the daughter needs to scan, need, need to maybe log in because this is a medical data after login. She need to choose whether horoscope of the mother, which 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 one uh, who she likes, and then after choose or maybe more chance that <laughs> after that uh, they will uh, they will send the data link between devices and the application. So. The result will turn from any medical data from data bank or maybe uh, diagnostic, diagnostic from our doctor, our employee, and then translate the algorithm of the application of our programmer will translate med the medical data into the horoscope. Then, after that, we will we need to gathering voices, voice data, video data from. Uh, many fortune teller, and then the algorithm will uh, catch or maybe select the right data to show to her. The situation will be like this. Okay, testing. Uh, after after okay, sorry. After testing, so we test with uh, two user. Uh, they know uh, they know the concept. They know uh, how what the matter of this application, but. They don't know the sequence of, of, of this application and the device, how connect, how to translate from medical data into uh, horoscope data. So we need to fix in this sequence because it's kind of engineering system or something like that. Okay, I, have, I still have 40 seconds. <laughs> so this, the situation will be like this. <clears throat> the girl will go to her mama and show the video, the voice to, 
to the mama and say that, uh, and mama, you are a Scorpio, right? You are for June this week. They said uh, the Saturn and the Sun will straight in the same line and then they interrupt with uh, some kind of Venus. So make the moon more, more powerful. <laughs> then, then the Rahu will give you uh, a fever in this week. So you need to drink more water or maybe you need to have some vacations, need some rest to get healthy. That's all. Thank you. Just a moment, this is our application that our programmer did it last night. We'll be like this. And I am this morning. Okay, thank you very much for all the work, hard work. It is the end of the workshop. And okay, for wrap up, uh, Professor Shiran Saka is going to give you some talk. Okay, I just want to thank you for all your hard work. I, I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much for your attendance. How was the workshop? Great. Did you enjoy that? Okay. So, you attend the workshop of the innovative thinking, but we have the three types of the innovative thinking. You attend the type one, we call attend type. So what's the difference? Okay, for this workshop, Kyoko-sensei, her design, your way of thinking, what's the step of the thinking to be innovative, right? You just follow her instruction. Okay, next, you should brainstorming, prototyping, CBCA, C design, that process. But in the real world, you have to design by yourself, right? You have your own business, you have your own project. No one design for your step of the thinking. So type two. This is a project-based learning we provide. And in Japan, if you come to Japan, we provide this one for the three months course. Okay? And it, this is not uh, included in the Japan, but the, in our school we are teaching type three. So sometimes if you have the project and doing type two, you are lacking the diversity sometimes. Okay, for there's no users, there's no stakeholders in your team. You need more diversity. Sometimes you have to design by yourself for others to come in to the workshop, and through the workshop, you will get some insight from the workshop. This is one advanced one. We teach this one, but it, okay, today, uh, yesterday and today, you feel this one. Right? Okay? So, but this is a very good starting point to understand what the innovative thinking. And uh, this time, we just, okay, design thinking is a very famous for the innovative thinking, but we combine design thinking with the system thinking approach. Why we add that? Okay, first one, I'm sorry, we cannot provide you this time. Design thinking process. We need a system approach to design what is the next step, how you can reach a goal, okay? But this time, we, don't, we didn't. But you feel something like, a, okay, visualize and structureize your activities from multi viewpoint. Like a CBC is from values. Or do you use a, okay, two by two, or such kind of things. And also, design architecture, Business architecture in this time you design. Okay, we have several other types of architecture through the lecture usually, but the, because of the limitation of time, only we tell you, told you the only the value architecture. It's a CDC. So we think these are very important. Not just design think. We have to add some kind of the system thinking approach to the design think. And also one more thing. We sometimes use insight. Okay, insight 
is very important. If you stick to the idea, okay, if you make an idea this time, and today you did a prototyping and testing, okay, if you fail that, you have to look for the other idea, okay? This kind of approach is not so good because oh, you can see. Okay. Idea is very different from this one, final idea and the first idea. Is this really you wanted to? So this is a problem in many cases. If you really start a business, okay, trying to start at the beginning point. A change you have to pivot, we call it so. Lean startups, okay, pivoting, pivoting, pivoting. If you base on the idea, finally you got a very different idea. If you are not keen to this idea, you cannot get the motivation to continue this one. That's the reason we are trying to focus on the insight. If you get the idea, you should identify the insight. And you have to check this one first, not the idea. Okay, once you confirm your insight is correct, usually through the prototyping and testing, you can confirm insight is okay. Okay, you can generate your idea based on the insight. If you fail this idea, you can go to the next idea based on the same insight. Okay, from this insight, you might think, okay, this is a for business for the elder person, but it fell okay, not elder person, maybe kindergarten, child, children. So you can switch the idea based on the same insight. You can make motivation, keep motivation based on the insight. So that's the reason we are trying to tell you the in, to identify insight. Right? So, through the uh, prototyping and testing, at the beginning, you don't have to confirm the idea itself. You should confirm your insight from your idea is really work or not. That is an important point. Okay, but you just work almost only one day. That's okay, yesterday, in the beginning, maybe just talking and introducing, but from yesterday afternoon to the today morning, just you work just one day, almost one day, but you have the idea, and you confirm your idea through the prototype and testing, just one day. You don't have to think about so serious. You can try next, try next. If you have the five days, you can try five times, right? In the real world, when you start a business, you cannot start just one day. You can take one time. You can confirm again and again and again to get a good result. This is a one important point. Just you work one day. And also important point is, once you design your process of thinking, you can trace how you get to the current result. If your idea is fair, you can just go back previous step or one more back and start again. We call it tra traceability. This traceability is also important to iterate your process. That is not just my, so get up the idea. You think your own idea, okay? This is also very, very important. But if you feel these kind of things, okay, we are very happy. You enjoy our workshop. You understand? Okay, thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you uh, for your attendance.